Chapter 326 Sparring Partner Until the next day when Hansen received the Geno Solution Overload, he closed the video of his combat against Queen. Hansen did not know how many times he had watched the video. The more he watched, the more he gained. He decided to review it from time to time, so that he could pay more attention to his defects and weaknesses. After drinking the Geno Solution, Hansen started to practice Overload. Different from Heresy Mantra which emphasized on strengthening his inner organs, Overload focused on putting pressure on his body. To put it in plain terms, when practicing Overload, Hansen needed to do continuous exercise to stimulate his body cells to make his body work under extreme conditions. After some thinking, Hansen decided to practice Overload on Gladiator via combats. In the holographic device, the simulated body was synchronized with his real body. Although he would not be injured, and his movements were otherwise real. Hansen entered the Evolver section of Gladiator again and immediately received a friend request. Why would someone add me? Hansen was slightly surprised and checked the ID. It said Q's H, which he did not recognize. Hansen still clicked yes. Very soon, Q's H appeared in Hansen's friend list. Seconds later, Q's H sent Hansen an invite to fight. It was rare that someone would invite Hansen, so he immediately agreed. When he was waiting for the countdown, he checked out his opponent. QZH was a young man around 20 years old. Judging from his age, even if he was an evolver, he should still be new and weak. Hansen saw that QZH did not carry a weapon and chose to not use one as well. Overload required body movements, and it would be more convenient without a weapon. After the combat started, QZH quickly rushed to Hansen and Hansen fought back. Very soon, Hansen was surprised. QZH was much stronger than he thought. Hansen estimated that he at least had a fitness index of 30. If he just evolved, then he should have evolved with his sacred Geno points maxed out. What was more impressive was that QZH not only had great fitness, but also fought exceptionally well. Every move he used was powerful. Hansen could tell that he must have learned from a master. Hansen became excited. It would benefit him greatly to spar with someone like QZH. Hansen initiated Heresy Mantra and enhanced his fitness level greatly, otherwise he would not be QZH's match. Even so, Hansen was still inferior to QZH in terms of fitness. After using both Heresy Mantra and Overload, Hansen could reach a fitness level of 28, while QZH had an overall index of 30 and some items over 35. If QZH was a beginner, it was very likely that he could push his fitness index above 100 which was the goal of many evolvers. However, few people could reach that goal. Those who evolved with mutant geno points maxed out could have a fitness index of around 20 after the evolution. Those who evolved with sacred geno points maxed out would gain a sacred body and reach 30 in fitness index. After collecting geno points in second god sanctuary, ideally an evolver could reach 100 in fitness index, which was about as high as an evolver could reach. Hansen was glad to fight QZH, who was strong but not strong enough to eliminate Hansen instantaneously. Hansen used all kinds of methods to fight QZH and stimulated the vitality of his body cells and their overload. In the beginning, overload only had limited effects. Hansen had to make breakthroughs under the state of overload in order to enhance its effects. Bang! In half an hour, Hansen was defeated by QZH. QZH was better than him in every aspect and did not leave him any chance to fight back. Hansen did not feel upset and sent QZH an invite. QZH agreed immediately. QZH was great in terms of strength and speed, and he used many hypergeno arts that Hansen had never seen before. Having realized he was not QZH's match in either fitness or hypergeno arts, Hansen thought of one thing. Maybe I could try that. At least it will buy me more time. Hansen thought of the kiting skills that Queen uses. Since it was hard to fight QZH head-on, the best Hansen could do was to refine his skills and eliminate his defects. In addition, he needed to use some strategies to prolong the fight. Queen's kiting skills were like a ghost strategy. When he made the first step, he had to have the big picture in mind and think 10 steps ahead. Only by doing that could he lure or force his opponent to follow his design. Although it was unlikely that Hansen could reach Queen's level in one or two months, he liked the kiting skills a lot, which was why Hansen mimicked Queen's kiting skills during the fight with QZH. Although Hansen performed terribly in the beginning, he was making slow progress. 
It was a skill that needed lots and lots of practice. Qian Hijin felt intrigued when fighting Han Senator Qian Hijin had always practiced with the Evolvers in Ares Martial Hall. Even though those Evolvers had many skills, Qian Hijin would gradually get to know their movement patterns. However, the combat against Hansen was different. Hansen had shown him different things, such as disordered rhythm and weird strikes, sometimes even Qian Hijin's own tricks. Qian Hijin thought Hansen was an odd fellow. Qian Hijin considered what he learned was eclectic enough, while Hansen never ceased to surprise him, which provided him with many inspirations. Qian Hijin and Hansen did not communicate at all, and always started the combat the minute they saw each other, which continued for days. Without any conversation, the two persons were immersed in their own practice and thought of each other as a sparring partner. Chapter 327 Absolute Champion Qian Hijin had spent a lot of time on Gladiator recently, but he was feeling more and more pressure. It was more and more difficult for him to defeat Han Sr. In the beginning, Qian Hijin was only intrigued by Han Sen's unexpected tricks. However, it took him more and more effort to beat Han Senator these two days. He had to use all he got and seek new breakthroughs in order to win. The main issue was that Han Sen's fitness was getting better and better, which made Qian Hijin lose his advantage. In fact, it was not due to the actual improvement of Han Sen's fitness, but the progress he made in practicing overload. Now, Hansen could perform better under overload, which made Qian Hejin feel Hansen was getting a better physique. Under overload, the combat was dangerous to Han Senator once overload surpassed his limits, there would be dire consequences. However, at this point, Hansen's body had not reached that limit. No, not fast enough. This speed is not enough for me to dodge the turtle bite. Hansen's body was moving at a dazzling speed and his feet almost became a blur with Spartacle deployed. Although Hansen spent most of his time on Gladiator, he would train one hour per day without the holographic device. In the virtual combat, he could not sense every single detail, which made the one-hour training a must. The location Hansen chose to use for his training was the venue of Heavy Warframe Society, which continued to be an unpopular society. After Fatty and Skinny graduated, only Han Sen and his friends remained in the society. Because of Wang Mei Ming, the school allowed them to keep the society in their warehouse. However, no one would come here normally. This time, however, someone was watching Han Sen train from afar. Jing Jia watched Han Sen train with complex emotions. Since he lost to Han Sen last time, Jing Jia had studied the spinning arrow even harder for a long time. However, no matter how hard he tried, he could not be as good as Han Sr. Hearing about Han Sen's training, Jing Jia decided to wait for Han Sen there and talk to him. However, Han Sen directly started training since he came here, so Jing Jiwu watched and waited. After watching for a while, Jing Jia's look had changed. Although Han Sen was simply doing a shuttle run practice, Jing Jia was shocked by Han Sen's speed. He had only seen such speed among evolvers. In all the unevolved person he knew, Jing Jia had never witnessed such speed, not even with his big brother Jing Jiwu. Hansen had not even used Heresy Mantra, otherwise he would have even higher speed. Do you need me for anything? After training, Hansen sat down on a chair, wiped his face, drank some water, and looked to Jing Jia. He had noticed Jing Jia since the beginning. You said you would teach me spinning arrow. Is that true? Said Jing Jia, chewing on his lips. For someone as proud as Jing Jia, it was not easy to plead. Of course, if you want to learn, all you need to do was to pay me tuition, and then I would feel happy to teach you," said Hansen with a smile. Aren't you afraid that I will learn from you and then defeat you? Jing Jia stared at Hansen and asked. Hansen had finished the bottle of water, threw the empty bottle into the trash can, and said, as long as it is something I have learned, I will be the best at it. If you want to learn, I could teach you any time but you will never be able to beat me. Looking at Han Sen's expression, Jing Jia gritted his teeth and said, I want to learn. When can you start to teach me? If you pay me, we can start now, Han Sen smiled and said. Jing Jia immediately paid Han Sen what he asked. He did not believe he would lose to Han Senator with his talent. All he lacked was Han Sen's tricks. As long as he learned Han Sen's tricks, he would never lose to Han Sen again. After taking the money, Hansen started to teach Jing Jia a spinning arrow. Since Jing Jia had already practiced hard on that, it was easy to teach him. Hansen did not reserve anything when he was teaching. 
He taught Jing Jiya everything he needed to know about spinning arrow, and all that left to do was for Jing to practice. Like Hansen had said, he was not afraid that others might learn from him, because he would still be the absolute champion using the same technique. In addition, spinning arrow was only one lead in his knowledge system. Although tricks were important in martial arts, what was more important was to use the right trick at the right time. Application was the key to all types of martial arts. Jing Jia had only learned how to shoot spinning arrows, but did not have his own style. Since Jing Jia was willing to pay, Hansen did not mind earning some money. Although he did not need money at this point, more cash did not hurt. Jing Jia was afraid in the beginning that Hansen might have some reservations and only teach him part of the tricks. However, he discovered very soon that if he had learned everything that Hansen had taught him, he would be able to shoot spinning arrows like Hansen did, if not better. Is he that confident? Why does he believe he would always defeat me? Watching Hansen leave, Jing Jia did not know what to think. After returning to his dorm, Hansen received a call from Gambler, who told him that there was a new mission assigned by the management. After reviewing the information Gambler sent him, Hansen was surprised that there was such a person in God's sanctuary. Hansen pondered and told Gambler that he would like to take on the mission himself. On one hand, the mission was too dangerous for most of the other members in the special squad. On the other hand, Hansen wanted to meet that person himself, which was why he decided to take on the mission. More importantly, that person was currently in glory shelter. Chapter 328, Botany. The content of the mission was to provide protection for the target when the target arrived at Steel Armor Shelter and accompany the target to the next shelter. At this point, the target was still in Glory Shelter and was going to travel to Steel Armor Shelter. Hansen decided to meet the target before the mission began. The target was a professor named Sun Ming Hua. According to his profile, he was about 80 years old and had maxed out on all four types of Geno points. However, he still chose to stay in First God's Sanctuary instead of entering the Second, because he was a professor of botany. He had done research work on the plantation in First God's Sanctuary for decades. In fact, although Sun Ming had maxed out on his Geno points, he could not fight well. All he had was a strong physique. Sun Ming Hua had spent no time on practicing hyper geno arts or combat skills, but put all his energy on studying the plants in First God Sanctuary. All his geno points came from the meat provided by the Alliance. He had never been hunting. Hansen had high respect for people like this. If Sun Ming Hua chose to stay in First God Sanctuary, he would age much faster than evolvers. In the future, despite that he would gain 100 years in lifespan once he evolved, the process of aging could not be turned back. He would continue his life as an old man. Even worse, an old body was terrible for hunting. When Sun Ming Hua entered Third God's Sanctuary, there was no way he would survive. In addition, Sun Ming Hua had never practiced hyper geno arts. At his age, it was too late to start. His choice was to do research at the cost of his life. Hansen could never do that, but he admired people like Sun deeply. What Hansen did not understand was how Sun Ming Hua conducted his research under the condition that no technology could be used in God's sanctuary. All kinds of equipment and formulas simply did not work in God's sanctuary. Also, what did Sun Ming Hua do his research for? Speaking of plants, Hansen thought of the turtle, which came out from the ocean to feed on the plants in Copper Mountains. Hansen wondered what the plants meant to the turtle. Hansen arrived at a room in Glory Shelter at the agreed time and saw Sun Ming Hua himself. Because he had maxed out on all Geno points, Sun Ming Hua did not look like an old man 80 years old. He seemed to be around 40. In addition to Professor Sun Ming Hua, Hansen also saw the three members of Glory Special Squad who were responsible for the professor's safety in Glory Shelter. Hansen, is it? Looks like I will become your problem soon. Professor Sun Ming Hua greeted Hansen warmly. Your safety is my duty, said Han Sr. However, the three members in Glory Special Squad were not as friendly to Han Senator who was still in their shelter, while a stranger Han Sin was intervening in their mission, which was upsetting to them. Han Sin knew that very well and said to the head of Glory Special Squad, Jean Raiji, please rest assured. I only hope to follow you to Steel Armor Shelter. Before we arrive there, I will follow your commands and will not cause any trouble. Jean Raiji warmed up a little and introduced the other two members to Han Senator. One of them was named Lu Mingda and the other Jean Chioli. 
Lu Mingdao was quite a hunk and carried a huge sledgehammer that looked familiar to Han Senator Hansen thought about it and recognized the sledgehammer to be the sacred blood gear he gained from killing the sacred blood creature in Sand Valley. He gave the sledgehammer to Huang Fu Ping Ching for action and now it had ended up in Lu Mingda's hands. The fact that Lu Mingda was able to use this sledgehammer showed that he had special gifts in terms of strength. Hansen believed he must have also practiced a hypergeno art that focused on enhancing his strength. Jean Chili was Jean Raiji's cousin. He looked polite and easygoing. Although the three were a bit upset about Hansen joining them early, they could not say anything because Hansen had submitted an application which was approved by the management. In addition, Hansen did not cause any trouble or voice any opinion, which made them feel better. Sun Ming Hua did not go to Steel Armor Shelter directly but needed to collect some specimen of the plants near Glory Shelter first, which would take about 10 days. To Han Sen's surprise, Sun Ming Hua's destination was Copper Mountains. Professor, why did you become obsessed with botany in God's sanctuary? After knowing Sun Ming Hua better, Han Sen knew that he was not someone hard to talk to. One night, while everyone was eating dinner around a bonfire, Han Sen voiced his doubt. Sun smiled and said, it is more like a family tradition. My grandfather and father were all researchers in this area. I have picked up a lot of knowledge of botany since little and have always been interested in studying it. Hansen pondered and did not say anything. He did not know how to ask what he was wondering about. The creatures in God's sanctuary could contribute geno points to humans, while no one had ever gained any geno points from eating the plants. In addition, the majority of the plants were harmful to the human body. It seemed Sun Ming Hua had seen through Han Sen's mind. Or maybe it was because too many people had asked the same question before. The reason I studied the plants in First God's Sanctuary is to make some contributions to mankind. The professor smiled and said, The creatures in God's Sanctuary could provide geno points, but the plants could not do the same. They were all living things, so why would they differ so much? Han Sen shook his head, as he did not have a clue. In fact, my family used to be in the study of medicine and had a focus in the ancient herbal medicine. My grandfather and father believed that since all sorts of herbs had medical values, we could also take advantage of the plants in God's sanctuary. In fact, we all know that many plants were harmful to the human body, but this further proved that these plants were effective. Sun Ming Wu went on and on with his explanations. Chapter 329, The Turtle Again the three from Glory Shelter had heard this too many times and were no longer interested, while Han Sen was intrigued. Three generations in Sun Ming Hua's family had done tremendous research work on the plants in First God's Sanctuary, and the remaining interest was to find out whether the plants in God's Sanctuary could be used in medicine. Because scientific methods did not work in God's Sanctuary, Professor Sun's family still managed to achieve great results in the research. They mainly did their research through observing the reactions of the creatures after consuming certain plants. They would also keep some creatures to feed them plants to determine the effects of different plants. Of course, creatures were different from humans. Before they conducted human subject experiments, they could not publish any of their findings. However, Professor Sun Ming was shared with Hansen about some of their findings. For example, Sun Ming Hua's grandfather had made a certain paste from some of the plants in God's sanctuary, which was effective on external wounds. In fact, they had many similar inventions, which were only applied in a limited scope. The main reason was that the herbal medicine they made was not much better than the man-made medicine in the Alliance. In addition, the side effects were unknown, which was why it was hard to be promoted. Hansen had many conversations with Sun Ming Hua on the way. Hansen mainly wanted to learn some common sense in case it would be useful in God's sanctuary. What's more, he was interested in the plants the turtle chose to eat and wondered what they could be used for. Unfortunately, although Sun Ming Wai had conducted research for decades, it was not nearly enough time to explore first God's sanctuary. Hansen described the fruit tree to Sun Ming Hua, while Sun Ming Hua did not know what plant it was, let alone its effects. However, after hearing about the turtle from Hansen, Sun Ming Hua said, In my decades of research, I have witnessed a lot of creatures consuming plants, despite that the majority of them did not need to eat plants. According to my observation, the creatures did not consume plants to maintain life like we do. Then what do they eat the plants for? Hansen couldn't help asking. I have given a lot of thought to the question, 
and my conclusion is that those plants might be helpful to their reproduction, Sun Mingwa hesitated and said. The Glory Special Squad members did not agree with Sun Mingwa. Why on earth would plants help reproduction? It's not like the plants were Viagra. However, Sun Mingwa's words reminded Hansen of the Golden Growler. Although the Golden Growler did not need plants, it consumed tons of creatures before it gave birth to its baby. Hansen was guessing, either plants or meat, all the pregnant creatures needed to eat. If that was true, Hansen felt like he had an opportunity. Maybe the turtle was eating to give birth as well. If it was anything like the Golden Growler, it would produce its life essence to feed its baby after giving birth. At that time, Hansen would have a chance to snatch its life essence. Hansen had only just started on practicing overload. He was afraid that the turtle might return to the ocean. If he could snatch the life essence while the turtle was giving birth, that would be ideal. Hansen, is that turtle you mentioned still in Copper Mountains? While Hansen was still thinking how to ask Professor Sun Ming what to check on the turtle, the professor asked him first. It should still be there. No one had seen it come out, replied Hansen hurriedly. All right, let's go see the turtle. It might be helpful to my research, Sun Ming Wa decided on the schedule. The Glory Special Squad did not have much to object. They did not participate in the campaign to hunt the turtle, but they had heard about it. There were plenty of creatures in the Copper Mountains, but none of them was scary. In their opinion, the turtle should not be too dangerous since it was not fast. Only Hansen knew that the turtle had an unbelievable speed. Hansen did not say anything about it and only wanted to check on the turtle from afar. In addition, Hansen would like for the professor to determine whether the turtle was actually giving birth. Sun Ming Wa should be an authority in that. The group of people marched into Copper Mountains. Sun Ming Wa had a great physique and a sacred blood mount, so they had a smooth trip. Hansen did not have much to do and kept chatting with Sun Ming Wa. Sun Ming Wa had spent decades doing research in First God Sanctuary, while all his friends had left sooner or later. It was rare that a young man would listen to him like Han Sr. Since Hansen was interested, Sun Ming Wa had shared a lot. Sun Ming Wa did his research for his interest as well as to benefit mankind, so he had nothing to hide and taught Hansen a lot of practical knowledge, such as how to determine which plants were edible and which plants were toxic. Hansen memorized all the information, which might be life-saving in the future. After traveling on the back of the Golden Growler, Hansen understood that once he left the shelters, it was not easy for a human to survive in the wild. After searching in Copper Mountains for days, they finally spotted the turtle, which was chewing on some black and brown vines. Professor, let's just stay here and watch. If we get closer, it might be risky. Hansen stopped Professor Sun Ming while who was approaching the turtle. Sun Ming Wa frowned and said, this is a bit too far and I could see nothing. Can we get closer? Try the telescope first. It is dangerous to approach, said Han Sr. What can we possibly see from here? Go, Professor. We will protect you, said Lu Mingda after throwing Hans in a look of disapproval. Chapter 330, Fighting the Turtle. Sun Ming Wa wanted to get closer to the turtle. Jean Raiji checked the distance and did not object. Professor, the sacred blood creature is something different. Last time, a lot of people from Glory's shelter were flying to hunt it, while they not only failed but also lost many men. How about we stay farther from it? Hansen tried to talk the professor out of it. Since he was the one who mentioned that to the professor, Hansen was not willing to see any mishaps happening. Hansen, do you doubt the ability of Glory Special Squad? Said Lu Mingda, displeased. Jean Raiji and Jean Chioli couldn't help frowning. Hansen had been a good fellow so far but now he was trying to intervene in their mission. Sun ming -wa quickly said, han Sun, don't worry. We are not trying to approach it, just get a bit closer. It will be fine. Hansen did not know what to say to them. He could not tell them that he was not a sacred blood creature, but a super creature. The professor had already moved and got closer to the turtle under the protection of the glory special squad. Professor, stop right here. We really cannot go any farther. Hansen reached out her hand and stopped the professor when they were a thousand feet from the turtle. If the turtle got mad, Hansen was not sure if he could keep all of them safe even if he used all he got. Sun ming -wa hesitated. The distance was still not ideal for his observation. However, seeing Hansen being so careful, Sun ming -wa did not insist on going forward, but used his telescope to watch the turtle. Damn. Hansen, this is not steel armor shelter yet. 
said Jean Raiji solemnly with his brows knitted. Han said, what did you say in the beginning? Why are you being so controlling now? Lu Ming Da shouted. Hansen said calmly, I don't mean to be controlling, but the professor is only here because I told him about the turtle. I cannot let anything happen to him, otherwise I would feel so guilty. What can happen to him? It is just a sacred blood creature. We are not going to alert it. Even if we do, we could guarantee the professor's safety. He would not even lose a hair. This is not your business, said Lu Ming Da madly. Being just a thousand feet away from the turtle, the voice of Lu Ming Da alerted the turtle, which turned around and had its eyes fixed on them. Hansen felt a chill down his spine. He remained still and watched the turtle. Lu Ming Da was still upset and wanted to add something, but Jean Raiji had also noticed the turtle's movements and stopped him. Suddenly, the turtle moved all its four legs and rushed to them as fast as a bird. Feeling worried, Hansen quickly yelled at Sun Ming Hua, Professor, run. Although Sun Ming Hua had maxed out on all his Geno points, he did not spend any time practicing martial arts and did not react fast enough. When he summoned his mount, the turtle was already next to him. Seeing how fast the turtle was, Jean Raiji, Lu Mingda, and Jean Choli were dumbstruck. This was not what they had heard. This turtle was even much faster than a sacred blood mount. It's just a turtle. I will smash it right now, Lu Mingda yelled and smashed at the turtle with his sledgehammer. The sledgehammer was very heavy, but the turtle did not even dodge. Its speed became even faster and the sledgehammer ended up on its shell, instead of its head, where Lu Mingda was aiming. Bang! The hammer as large as a barrel knocked on the turtle's shell and made a sound of metal. Ah! Lu Mingda screamed. The sledgehammer was a destructive weapon, so it kicked back a lot stronger than other weapons. Lu Mingda had used all his force in the strike, which failed to hurt the turtle at all. On the other hand, all the bones in his hands were broken, the sledgehammer was blown away into rocks and left a huge hole there. Not only Lu Mingda, even Jean Raiji and Jean Chioli were shocked. They knew how heavy the sledgehammer was. With a hard strike by Lu Mingda, even a tank could be flattened. However, the turtle was not even scratched, which was frightening. Hansen did not stand still. He immediately made a kick. It was not at the turtle, but at Lu Mingda who was still screaming. Lu Mingda was kicked a dozen feet away. Both Jean Raiji and Jean Chioli were shocked, but they immediately saw the turtle bit where Lu Mingda was standing so fast that they could not even tell what the turtle's neck looked like. Don't stand here. Go. Seeing Sun Ming Hua froze on his mount, Hansen yelled, ran to the sledgehammer, and summoned the fairy queen. Jean Raiji and Jean Chioli picked up Lu Mingda and wanted to run, while the turtle made another bite at Jean Raiji who was the closest to it. Jean Raiji did not have any time to dodge, but he was fast enough to block the turtle bite with his sacred blood knife. Crack! The turtle bit the sacred blood blade and broke it in half. A sacred blood weapon was destroyed like that. The Glory Special Squad were almost scared to death. The knife was a sacred blood weapon and was broken under the turtle bite easily. They were suddenly covered in cold sweat and wanted to run. However, the turtle was so fast that they could not make it. It quickly reached out its neck and bit toward Jean Raiji who was empty-handed. Jean Raiji had used all his energy and there was no way he could avoid this bite. Damn it! Jean Raiji quickly stepped back, but he knew he could not make it. Lu Ming Da and Jean Chioli did not even have any chance to save Jean Raiji, given how fast the turtle was. Bang! Something giant and black suddenly fell on the turtle's head and knocked its head down. Chapter 331 Maneuver Hansen Jean Raiji escaped death and was as pale as a sheet of paper. Seeing Hansen who had knocked the turtle down with the sledgehammer, he was suddenly thrilled. Don't stay here. Run. Hansen watched the turtle solemnly. Although the head of the turtle was knocked down, Hansen did not feel it was broken. It felt like smashing on rubber. As he expected, the turtle raised its head and shook it around, its emerald-like eyes fixed on Hans Sr. Hansen did not hesitate and smashed at the turtle again. Using heresy mantra, his heart was beating like thunder, and his blood and chi were circulating at a tremendous speed, making his veins stand out. The sledgehammer was so heavy that even Lu Ming Da could only slowly brandish it a dozen times. With Lu Ming Da's speed, it was impossible for him to ever hit the turtle. Hansen was stronger than Lu Ming Da to begin with, but even he could not hit the turtle relying on just his strength. Only with the heresy mantra and overload, 
Hansen managed to hit the turtle's head when it was not paying attention. Although Hansen's second strike was still under dual enhancement, the turtle quickly withdrew its head and avoided the sledgehammer. The moment it drew back its head, the turtle stepped hard on the ground and threw itself at Hansen like a cannonball. Hansen waved his arm backward and knocked the sledgehammer on the turtle's shell, sending the turtle back to the ground. However, the turtle quickly bit the handle of the sledgehammer and broke it in half. All Hansen had left in his hand now was a part of the handle. He hastily ran to the side, while the turtle was pissed off by Han Sen and decided to throw itself again at him. Hang in there. We're here to help. Jean Raiji summoned another weapon and was ready to help Han Sr. Hansen felt almost depressed. What the heck are you doing staying here? Are you trying to get killed by the turtle? This is a super creature, and none of you would be alive if you stay. Help my ass. Run. I'll be right after you, Hansen exclaimed to Jean Raiji. Jean Raiji paused and quickly ran away with the others, looking back at Hansen while running. Hansen quickly dodged the turtle and rolled toward the sledgehammer with its handle broken. Although the handle was broken, there was still a part of it attached to the hammer. Hansen grabbed the sledgehammer and smashed at the turtle again. The three united with Sun Minghua and then stopped, watching Hansen fighting the turtle alone. The sledgehammer was like a toy in Hansen's hand, moving as fast as lightning bolts. The three of them were all dumbstruck. They knew very well how heavy the hammer was. Even Lu Mingda would be tired out after a dozen strikes, and he could never use it as well as Hansen did. His strength, exclaimed Lu Mingda with his mouth widely open. Is Hansen going to be okay? Sun Ming Wa looked at Hansen with a worried look. If it were not for Hansen, they would have all died. Let's wait and see. If he is in danger, we'll go back for him, said Jean Raiji, gritting his teeth. He started to regret not listening to Han Senator otherwise, they would never have been trapped here. Wait a second. Maybe Han Sun has his plans. Jean Shouli stopped Jean Raiji. It's all me. If it were not for me, the turtle would not have noticed us. I will apologize to Han Senator and I will fight the turtle myself. I will not let him sacrifice himself for us, said Lu Mingda with his face flushed. What's the point in staying these? We should focus on helping Han Sun get out of there exclaimed Jean Chioli. How could they possibly think of anything? The level of the turtle was beyond their wildest imagination. There was no solution whatsoever. With the dual enhancement, Hansen found he was still slower than the turtle even when he was using Spartacle. However, to Hansen's surprise, his practice was not a waste. There was no need for him to be faster than the turtle. What was most helpful to Hansen at this point was the kiting skills he learned from Queen. Hansen had always been good at prejudgment. Using kiting skills, he could calculate when the turtle would strike in order to avoid its bite. Hansen was executing his strategy with each step, luring the turtle to bite where he had designed. This way, it was much easier for Hansen to dodge its attacks. Although Hansen was not as fast as the turtle, he could still run away from its attacks. It was like running from the bullets. There were all kinds of scenes depicting someone avoiding bullets in the movie. However, in reality, it could never be done. When the trigger was pulled, no matter how fast one was, it was simply impossible to dodge the bullet. In order to dodge the bullet, the only way was to prejudge when the opponent would shoot and avoid the trajectory beforehand. Hansen was doing exactly that, making the turtle bite somewhere and moving away from that spot ahead of time. The kiting skills made something impossible possible Hansen who was slower than the turtle was able to fight it. However, the kiting skills were demanding on one's brain power. Under the burden of overload, Hansen could not sustain very long. Hansen also had the Fairy Queen be soul to thank. The Fairy Queen made the turtle's movement much slower in his eyes, which helped him to better his strategy. However, it was still almost impossible for him to kill the turtle. Hansen had already been fighting at his limits. He had hit the turtle with the sledgehammer a few times. But such frightening force did not even cause much damage to the weakest part of the turtle's body. Strength. I need more strength. Hansen shouted inwardly. However, he felt quite content that he was able to fight the turtle for this long. Avoiding the turtle bite one more time, Hansen had come to a cliff, from which he jumped without hesitation to avoid the turtle's attacks in the gaze of his company. Chapter 332. Playing Go. After falling from the cliff, Hansen summoned his wings and flew away. The turtle looked down the cliff and turned around. It obviously had no intention to chase Hans Sr. When Hansen joined the rest of the group, 
Everybody was overjoyed to see him. Hansen, we are alive thanks to you. I am so sorry that I almost got you killed, said the professor, feeling guilty. It's not your fault, professor. This is all on me. Hansen, you can punish me as you like. I owe everything to you, Lu Mingda said with his face flushed. Jean Raiji wanted to add something but was interrupted by Hansen. We were all just trying to protect Professor Sunday. You just did not know how scary the turtle was. It's okay. Rest assured, on Senator you have saved all of our lives. If you ever need anything, we will be here for you," said Jean Raiji seriously. After some discussion, the group decided to return to Glory's shelter for maintenance before they came back for the turtle. Hansen took the opportunity to go back to Blackhawk. He quickly logged in Gladiator, opened his friend list, and found Queen online. Hansen was overjoyed and hastily sent her an invite. The kiting skills he learned from Queen were still faulty. There were many things that he failed to understand. If he could actually learn the kiting skills from Queen, maybe he could fight the turtle without relying on speed. Therefore, Hansen wished to fight her another time and observe her kiting skills. However, Hansen did not know whether Queen would agree to fight him. After all, the two of them were too far apart in strength. If Queen were there, she would have killed the turtle easily. Hansen estimated that a super creature should have a fitness level around 40, while the strongest humans in First God Sanctuary could only reach 20 in some aspects. Most good men usually had an average fitness index of 15. Even those who had maxed out on all four types of Geno points in First God Sanctuary only had a fitness index of 30, which was still not enough for one to kill a super creature. However, an evolver with a fitness level beyond 100 like Queen would be able to kill a super creature easily. An evolver would not be able to return to First God Sanctuary, unless the evolver had just evolved. Even for Queen, when she was an unevolved person or had just become an evolver, she would not have been able to fight the turtle. Hansen was not sure whether Queen would agree to fight him, but he wanted it so much. One more round. Just one more round. Seeing Hansen's invite, Queen was dazed. Her setting was not to accept invites from strangers, and she had never had a friend before, so she had never received an invite. Seeing the invite was from a soldier on warship, Queen hesitated and clicked yes. Hansen was exhilarated to see Queen and her amazing kiting skills again. After the countdown was over, Hansen immediately ran toward her. He did not dare to wait for her attacks. Their fitness levels were so different that he would be killed immediately. After all, his fitness index was only 30, while hers was probably 100. Queen only dodged the punch like last time, and it did not fight back. Feeling excited, Hansen threw his other fist at her and made a step. Queen was surprised. Hansen's punch and step were not as simple as they appeared to be. Although he was not that fast, in Queen's eyes, his moves were unexpected. Hansen's step was almost like her kiting skills, making it impossible for her to force Hansen into a corner. Is he copying me? Queen's gaze fell upon Hans' senator she continued to observe. Very soon, Queen was certain that Hansen was mimicking her kiting skills. Although there were many errors and defects in his movements, it was amazing that he could achieve this level in such a short amount of time. Queen did not rush to end the combat. She wanted to see how well Hansen could do. Kiting skills were not for anybody. It was easy to learn, but hard to become a master at. It was like playing Go. Whoever knew the rules could play, but it was extremely difficult to excel at Go. Queen was good at kiting skills. At least among the opponents that she had met, no one could match her level. Hansen's performance more or less surprised her. He was a bit green and was still making mistakes, but in her eyes, he had his own understanding of the skills. Also, Hansen was sensitive about what she wanted to do. These proved that Hansen was talented in this matter. After testing Hansen's level, Queen stopped thinking about it. Being talented was one thing, but whether he could go far was another. Queen did not say anything but continued to dodge Hansen's attacks. However, Hansen suddenly felt much more pressured. It became more and more difficult for him to determine where Queen was going. They were like two players at a go game. Hansen was the weaker player and his every step was in Queen's calculation. There was no way he could fight back. Very soon, Hansen was pushed to the corner like last time. Bang! With another kick, Hansen was eliminated. When he returned to the game, Queen had already gone offline. However, Hansen did not feel upset, but more excited than ever. 
he was not sure if Queen was intentionally teaching him. Her last few steps were indicating the weaknesses in his kiting skills, which was why he felt terrible toward the end. This was not a bad thing for Hansen, but a good thing. Queen was like a teacher, helping him find his mistakes. Whether she was intentional or not, Hansen was grateful to Queen. Kiting skills were crucial for him to hunt super creatures. And kiting skills like this could not be practiced through tutorials like Hyper Geno Arts. Hansen had gained an incredible asset through Fighting Queen. After downloading the video of their combat, Hansen left Gladiator and went to the warehouse of Heavy Warframe Society. While watching the video, he pondered what he could do to refine his kiting skills. Indeed, Queen was trying to indicate Hansen's mistakes to him in the last few steps. There were not many people were interested in practicing kiting skills. Since Hansen was interested, she was willing to give him some tips. However, what she did casually meant a great deal to Hansen and added to his chance at killing a super creature. If I could use kiting skills to avoid the turtle's attacks, I will never be defeated. This way, I will find a chance to kill it sooner or later. Hansen became more excited. Chapter 333, Copper Demon. After watching the video of his combat against Queen, Hansen had gained a lot. The last few steps Queen made pointed out Hansen's weaknesses. After watching the video repeatedly, Hansen enjoyed correcting himself little by little. Many people would give up once they found they had made mistakes, but Hansen was willing to correct himself. Life was full of mistakes, and it was impossible for one to go back and live again. What Hansen cared more about was how he could avoid the same mistakes in the future. The kiting skills were not just physical movements. Thinking and acting were equally important in order to perfect the skills. Through trial and error, Hansen had refined his skills again and again. In a combat, everything could happen. What Hansen learned from Queen was the basic rules. With these rules, he could react faster under different situations in a combat. No matter how powerful his brain was, it was impossible for him to think too much when fighting. He had to cultivate his muscle memory through tons of practice. It was like in order to solve a math problem, one had to learn all kinds of equations before applying them in calculation. Queen had told Hansen some equations he did not know before. What he was trying to do was to integrate these equations into his muscle memory, so that he could react in the best way during a real combat. It was not hard to think one or two steps ahead. The difficulty was to know what the possibilities were after dozens of steps the moment he made the first step. It was hard to achieve that, and in fact, few could do it, which was why in the entire Ares Martial Hall, Queen was the one and only. Hansen did not sleep all night. The next morning when he woke up, his eyes were bloodshot as he had consumed too much of his brain power. I cannot keep going like this. The possibilities and kiting skills were endless like go. No matter how talented I am, it is impossible for me to know all the strategies. If I do not enhance my strategic thinking, it is pointless to learn different tactics. Hansen knew that he got himself into a dead-end alley, closed the video, cleaned his face, and went to sleep. He did not even know how long he had slept. Until his comlink rang, Hansen yawned, stretched, and got up. Jean Raiji asked Hansen to return to God's sanctuary, as everyone was prepared to observe the turtle again. Hansen agreed. After eating at the cafeteria, he entered Glory's shelter. Lumingda's hands had not recovered, so only Jean Raiji, Jean Xioli, Sun Ming Hua, and Hansen were going to the Copper Mountains. However, when the four of them reached the same spot, the turtle was no longer there. Sun Ming Hua collected some fragments of the vines that the turtle fed on last time. Because the turtle had eaten up all the vines, there were only some crumbs left. The group continued to search the mountains. Before they went far, they saw a red creature standing on a mountain in the opposite direction, looking around. The creature was six feet tall, looking like it was made of copper. It had scorpion's upper body, snake's tail, and six sickle-like claws. Copper Demon Jean Raiji was excited when he spotted the creature. Hansen was also exhilarated. Before he came to Copper Mountains, he had done some research about the region. In Copper Mountains, the most famous creature was the Copper Demon. The reason it was well known was that even the weakest Copper Demons were mutant creatures. Sometimes, even sacred blood Copper Demons could be spotted. The beast soul of a Copper Demon was the shape-shifting type, which was rare. Even a mutant Copper Demon Beast Soul could greatly enhance one's speed and strength. The Sacred Blood Copper Demon Beast Soul even had a pair of ladybug wings and allowed one to fly when shape-shifting. 
A beast soul that had dual functions of both shape-shifting and flying was obviously rare and valuable. Even a mutant copper demon without flying function was so expensive that many less wealthy people would kill for an opportunity to hunt for it. However, copper demons were only spotted in copper mountains. Since copper mountains were close to glory shelter, most copper demons had been slaughtered already. In recent years, only a few copper demons were spotted, which must have come from a nest. They had all heard about copper demons, but they had never seen one. This unexpected finding cheered them up. Let's go and try our luck. Maybe there is a chance for us to gain the beast's soul, said Jean Chilly excitedly. No one had any objections. It was rare that they had a chance to see such a famous creature. Even if it was just a mutant one without wings, they could find their luck. When the four of them went up the mountain, the thing they saw made them gasp. Where the copper demon was standing was a stone platform, behind which was a cave. At this point, many copper demons were creeping out of the cave, swaying their snake tails, their claws making sounds of metal. Among them, one was especially tall and had a deeper color than others. It also had red metal wings. The copper demon they saw in the beginning had already spotted the group of people and started to hiss. Shortly, dozens of copper demons flooded from the cave. It seemed that there were still more in the cave. The first sacred blood copper demon flapped its wings and dived at the group of people like a bomber. Damn it! Cover the professor. Jean Raiji became pale and summoned a beast soul knife, trying to block the sacred blood creature's attack. Hansen, however, was overjoyed. He was just wondering where to find a sacred blood creature, and one threw itself at them. What a pie in the sky! Chapter 334 Underground River Hansen directly summoned his horn bow and mutant black stinger arrow and made a shot at the sacred blood copper demon. Jean Raiji was about to fight the sacred blood creature with all he got, but suddenly saw a black arrow flying toward the creature's eyes. The sacred blood copper demon reacted fast. It suddenly clasped its six blade-like claws and blocked the black arrow. However, as its claws touched the arrow, the black stinger arrow suddenly started to spin like a drill head bouncing off the creature's claws. The arrow had touched the copper demon's eye and penetrated its head immediately. Thump! The sacred blood copper demon, which looked so powerful, suddenly fell from the sky and died. Sacred blood creature copper demon killed. No be soul gained. Drink its blood to gain 0 to 10 sacred geno points randomly. Hearing the voice, Hansen lamented that he did not gain a beast soul from this perfect sacred blood creature. Everything was just fate. Jean Sholi and Jean Raiji were dumbstruck, shooting the sacred blood copper demon dead with one arrow that was unbelievable. Since the sacred blood copper demon was killed, the mutant copper demons quickly ran toward the cave. The group of people chased after them. However, after they killed several slow mutant copper demons, they could no longer find the rest of them. The cave was deep and the paths inside were crisscrossed, so the group did not follow them, but chose to take care of the dead bodies first. The copper demon's bodies were as tough as metal. There was no meat to eat. All that was edible was some blood inside their body. Hansen carefully let the purple blood out and poured it into a bottle. Such a large sacred blood copper demon only had a bottle of blood. Since Hansen took care of the sacred blood copper demon alone, he did not need to share it with anyone. Hansen drank the blood in one breath and heard the voice telling him he had gained three sacred geno points. It was already quite something. After all, the most part of the copper demon's body was not edible, and Hansen was glad that the blood alone gave him three sacred geno points. Hansen now had 83 sacred geno points, and he was not far from maxing out. These creatures are so rare. How about we go inside the cave and kill the rest of the mutant ones? Maybe there is a chance to get their beast souls, suggested Jean Chioli excitedly after they processed the bodies. Hansen had not objections. Even a mutant shape-shifting beast soul was extremely popular. Hansen did not mind earning some money. Jean Raiji asked the professor's opinion, and Sun Mingwa agreed to it. In addition, there might be different plants or fungus inside the cave, which Sun Mingwa was interested in. The four of them entered the cave. Although there were many tunnels inside the cave, they were all wide enough for them to walk freely. They did not see anything on the way, not even the copper demons. The group kept searching but did not find any. The space became larger as they want. After walking for two hours, they suddenly entered a huge opening. An underground river 200 feet wide were running through the cave. The torrents were rapid, 
but for some reason, there was hardly any noise and the water even seemed calm. With the light of the torch, the group saw the copper demons on the other side of the river, creeping deeper into the cave. Shall we keep chasing? Jean Raiji asked Han Sr. Hansen checked the dark underground river and frowned. He still remembered the terrible experience he had last time he was in an underground river. The two obsidian dragons almost killed him. The cave was so dark that the light of the torch could not help them see inside the water. Instead, the reflection of the light almost blinded them. Hansen was scared that some aquatic sacred blood creatures like the obsidian dragons might suddenly appear here. No matter how strong he was, he would not be the creature's match underwater. Do you have wings? If we were to chase them, we should probably fly across the river, Hansen pondered and said. He did not really want to step into the water. Jean Raiji smiled bitterly and said, We do have wings, but one was mutant and the other was primitive. That is problematic. I only have one pair of primitive wings as well. Hansen did not mention his sacred blood wings. He did not want anyone to see the purple feathered dragon wings if he did not have to. All right. I will use the mutant wings to carry the professor over. Sin and Chiuli, you can fly with your own wings, said Jean Raiji. Hansen shook his head and said, let me fly over first and try. If there is no danger, you can go. Hansen had a spooky feeling about the river, but he did not see anything. Since they were at this point already, he could not tell everyone to go back. In addition, Sun Minghua had discovered some interesting plants on the way here and seemed to be very interested in exploring the cave. Hansen summoned his black feathered beast wings and flew across the river about 15 feet from the ground. The primitive wings could not carry him high or fast, and that was already as high as he could go. Hansen stared at the dark underground river while flying so that he could react in time if anything were to happen. Standing on the bank, the rest of the group watched Hansen fly nervously. Darkness and water naturally brought fear to humans. When Hansen reached the middle of the river, he suddenly felt something was odd in the river. A chill went down his spine. Boom. With a huge splash in the water, a giant creature sprang out of the river with its mouth wide open, trying to swallow Hansen as a whole. S asterisk hashtag T. I knew something was wrong. Hansen stared into the creature's mouth. Chapter 335. Follow the turtle. From the underground river emerged a head that was somewhat like an alligator's. With its mouth wide open, it looked like the monster could easily swallow an entire cow, let alone a human. There were thousands of teeth in its mouth, which looked like a meat grinder. Even a body made of steel would be minced instantaneously. Hansen was not sure what the status of this creature was, so he dared not fight it head on. If it was a super creature, Hansen would probably get himself killed. Without saying anything, Hansen flapped his wings and shifted his body to the side. Pushing on the tip of the creature's mouth, Hansen returned to the bank. The creature roared and followed Hans Senator as its entire body came out of the underground river, everyone gasped. The creature's head looked like a crocodile's, while its body was like a centipede without feet. With its whole body shaking, the creature was incredibly fast. Hansen shot an arrow backward. The creature suddenly closed its mouth and crushed the arrow with his teeth. Hansen thought with terror. Fortunately, I did not use a beast soul arrow. Otherwise, my only mutant beast soul arrow would be destroyed. Run. Hansen summoned the tornado wolf, shooting at the creature riding on his mount. Although Hansen did not know whether it was a sacred blood creature or a super creature, it would be unlikely for him to hurt a creature with a body 300 feet long even with the three-blade harpoon. In addition, with such a gigantic body, this creature must be strong as well. If Hansen was hit by its tail, he would probably be severely hurt. In a tight space, it would not be wise to fight such a creature. The three protected Sun Minghua and rushed out. However, the monster was so fast that none of their mounts could run faster than it. The monster was at their heels in a second. Go in here, it is too narrow for the creature to enter. Hansen pointed at a hole and said. Seeing the creature smashing a rock more than seven feet tall, Jean Raiji and Jean Chili quickly took back the mounts and entered the hole along with Sun Minghua. The moment they were in the hole, the creature immediately threw itself at them. However, its head was much bigger than the entrance. It was as if the creature could not feel pain. It repeatedly hit the entrance with its head, making it bigger and bigger. Quick! Jean Raiji exclaimed and the group went deep inside the hole since they had no other option. The hole led to a tunnel. 
After they had walked for about a mile, they saw an opening and was again in a big cave. There were paths both to the left and right. Jean Raiji looked both way, but could not tell which way would lead to the exit. He then asked Sun Ming Wa, Professor, do you know which way we should go? Sun Ming will walk to the side and pinch some plants that looked like moss growing on the cave wall. He observed it and said, we should probably go left, since it seems that air was more likely to come from the left. Let's go left then. Jean Raiji trusted Sun Ming Wa in this respect. Previously when he was covering Sun Ming Wa, the professor explained these things to him, but Jean did not quite understand. They could hear thumping behind them. Obviously, the creature did not give up and was still hitting the entrance. There was no way they could return the way they came from. Hansen followed the rest. He was not really worried. Even if there was a super creature, he could always manage to run away even if he could not beat it. Very few creatures could threaten his life in First God's Sanctuary. The professor kept telling them which direction to go by observing the moss. After they had walked in the cave for half a day, they were completely lost. When they were in a large opening again, Hansen saw that the underground river had become a waterfall, running down the cave wall into a pool. Next to the pool, a black turtle as large as a car was drinking. It is that turtle. What is it doing here? Sun Ming was gasped in excitement. Lower your voice. Jean Raiji was startled and quickly stopped Sun Ming Wa. Luckily, the waterfall was loud and the turtle was very close to it, so it did not hear Sun Ming Wa's voice. The group of people stepped back before they started to discuss. Professor, do you think there is another way to go? Jean Raiji asked. He pondered and said, according to how the moss grows, the air should come from this giant cave. Jean Raiji smiled bitterly and asked Hansen, what do you think, Sin? Hansen hesitated and said, it is very likely that the turtle had come here to eat. After eating, it should be going away. If we follow it closely, we might be able to get out of here. True. Why did I fail to see that? Sun Ming Wa said gladly. This way, we can observe the turtle and find a way out in the same time. Great idea, Hansen. Jean Raiji and Jean Chioli did not have other ideas. The four decided to follow the turtle. They did not dare to approach the turtle, but observed it from afar. Although it was dark in the cave, the red patterns on the turtle shell were glowing in the dark like lava. The group did not need anything else to see the turtle. After the turtle had finished drinking, it slowly waddled to the cave next to it. The four exchanged a look and followed the turtle from afar. With the glowing patterns on the turtle, they would never lose sight of it. Chapter 336, Crazy Creature Hansen stared down the cliff and was shocked. So were Jean Raiji, Jean Chioli, and Sun Ming Wa. They had followed the turtle for two days, which had gone deeper and deeper. They felt something must be wrong, they were already on the cliff. Under the cliff was a gushing lava pool, and the turtle crawled into the pool as if it were water. The group did not see the turtle emerging again. Was it killed by the heat from the lava? Jean Raiji guessed. Although creatures were not as smart as people, I have never seen a suicidal one. Jean Shouli shook his head and said. Sun Ming Wa suddenly said excitedly, I know. What do you know, Professor? Asked Han Senior. You should remember I've told you that the creatures normally eat plants in order to give birth. After leaving the ocean, the turtle had consumed lots of plants and copper mountains. Maybe its goal was to give birth here, said Sun Ming Wan excitement. Giving birth? Here? Jean Chioli pointed at the lava pool incredulously. Although lava is fatal to humans, maybe it is not to the creatures. Did you notice the red patterns on the turtle's back? They look like lava. Maybe the turtle was born here in the lava. You know some turtles in our world also give birth in the sand despite that they live in the ocean. Explained the professor. Hansen watched the lava pool as he listened to the professor. He thought the professor's explanation made a lot of sense. The behaviors of the turtle was much like the golden growler. Maybe it was indeed giving birth here. However, if it was really like the golden growler, then it would die after spitting out its life essence. No matter how powerful Hansen was, it was impossible for him to jump into the lava for the life essence. It seems we have to find another exit, said Jean Raiji with his brows knitted. Obviously, there was no other exit. Sun Ming Wa pondered and said, We did not run into any danger on the way here. It must not be difficult if we wanted to go out. Let's stay and watch. Maybe the turtle will return to the ocean after giving birth. Hansen was glad he said that. If they left like this, he would be upset that he gave up on hunting a super creature when it was at its most vulnerable moment. 
At least, Hansen had to make sure that the turtle would not appear again before he gave up. Jean Raiji and Jean Chioli also agreed. They did not see any creature on the way here, so it would not be too risky to go back where they came from. In addition, they had brought enough supplies to last a month. When the group were still discussing, they suddenly stopped as they heard an odd noise. They looked to the direction of the noise and saw a giant creature emerging from a cave below them, breaking stones as it went. It turned out to be the creature that they saw from the underground river. The group were all frightened. They did not even dare to breathe. Very soon, they found out that the creature did not come for them, but went toward the lava pool under the cliff. No way, is that creature also born from the lava pool? Hansen said to himself. He was so curious that he looked down from the cliff. Jean Raiji, Jean Chioli, and Sun Ming Hua all let out a sigh of relief. Like Hansen, they were also curious and wanted to see what the creature was up to. In a minute, the creature made it to the side of the lava pool, but it did not enter as the group had imagined. Circling around the lava, the creature then crawled toward the stone wall next to the pool. The group felt weird. The stone wall had nothing on it, and they wondered what the creature was trying to do. As they were wondering, the creature suddenly threw itself hard at the wall as if it was agitated. Bang! The rocks fell under the impact. However, the stone wall was still intact. The creature hit the war again and again in madness, and the cracks were growing on the wall, while the creature itself was also injured and covered in blood. However, it did not stop ramming against the wall, as if the wall had killed its parents. Jean Choli was dumbstruck and said, This creature must be mad. It must be committing suicide. Sun Ming Hua did not speak. He was also puzzled and did not understand what the creature was doing. Although Hansen could not tell what the creature was doing either, he was overjoyed. Originally, he was concerned that the creature was too big, and he did not have an appropriate weapon to kill it. Now the creature was killing itself. When it was near death, it would be great if Hansen could take advantage of the opportunity and kill it. Judging from how strong it was, maybe it was really a super creature. The four of them lay on their stomach and looked down the cliff. Maybe the turtle went into the lava to give birth, but it was impossible that this creature was knocking its head on the wall to give birth as well. No matter how they thought about it, there was not a plausible explanation. What is it trying to do? Hansen stared at the creature ramming itself into the stone wall. From the dim light from the lava, he could see clearly the creature's movements. The stone wall was cracked by the creature, and it was bleeding heavily, its blood coloring the stone red. Suddenly, Hansen's pupils contracted. Chapter 337 Creature War Hansen gazed at the cracked stone wall. Initially, he thought the wall was red because of the creature was bleeding. However, with a closer look, it was more than the creature's blood. There seemed to be liquid infiltrating through the cracks from the other side. Under the glow of the lava, the liquid also seemed to be red. However, Hansen could tell that it was not blood, but more like water. Water. Hansen suddenly understood what the creature was going for. Behind the stone wall, there was very likely a branch of the underground river. The creature was trying to break the stone wall in order to feed water into the lava pool. Damn it. This creature is treacherous. It is trying to lead the water into the lava. Hansen thought. In the Alliance, when water met heat of the lava, one possibility was that the water would evaporate. However, if there were enough water, the lava would be turned into a piece of rock. Even if the turtle could survive in the lava, it didn't mean that it could survive in the rock. If the turtle was sealed in the rock, Hansen did not know if it was still feasible for him to obtain the turtle's life essence. Put on gas masks. Hansen exclaimed at the rest and quickly slapped a mask on himself. Although Sun Ming Hua, Jean Raiji, and Jean Ming Li did not understand why Hansen was asking, they had grown enough trust in Hansen recently, so they simply followed his instruction. Shortly after they put on the masks, they suddenly heard cracking and spluttering. Water started to come out of the stone wall that was more and more damaged by the creature, flooding into the lava and giving rise to pungent gray smoke. Get back. Don't get yourselves burned by the steam. Hansen did not dare to stay and watch, pulling the professor back with him. Bang! When the four of them stepped back, they heard a loud noise of stones crashing and water falling. Then there was a sizzling sound. With the rising of gray smoke, the entire cave became extremely hot that it was almost unbearable. The group quickly ran back. Fortunately, the gray smoke did not expand very fast. It took some time for the smoke to rise to the cliff. 
When they reached a small cave far from the cliff, they were covered in gray dust. Each of them looked like a statue coming out of storage. Luckily, they were all in beast soul armor and gas masks, so they were not hurt at all. After waiting for a long while in the small cave, the gray smoke gradually dispersed and the air started to cool down. All they could hear at this point was the water flowing. I will go have a look. Hansen did not want to let go. He had prepared so long to kill the turtle and would hate to see it killed in the lava. Running to the cliff again, Hansen looked down. Although there was still some thin smoke left, he could see clearly with the light penetrating from the stone wall broken by the giant creature. There was not a single spark in the lava pool. Under the cliff was a newly formulated lake. The water came from the underground lake that was originally behind the stone wall. Under the water, where the lava pool was, the lava solidified into a piece of smooth black rock, dotted with craters like the surface of the moon. The giant creature rolled around in the lake in excitement, screeching cheerfully. The turtle died just like that? Hansen could not believe that a super creature was killed so easily. It was unlikely. Hansen decided. The lava was liquid, so there must be a source of heat under the pool to keep it that way. Since the source of heat was not put out, it was impossible for the lava to solidify entirely. This creature is so devious to think of such a strategy. I wonder what's its grudge against the turtle? Said Jean Mingli, walking over and joining Han Sr. When Sun Ming Wu was about to say something, they suddenly heard rocks broken. The fresh rock ground started to crack. The giant creature was also alarmed by the sound and straightened its back like a cobra in attack mode, staring at the broken basalt vigilantly. Boom. The basalt suddenly burst. A huge black turtle rushed out from underneath with splashing lava, like a returning demon. The moment the turtle came out, it screamed at the giant creature and threw itself at the creature with its head hidden inside the shell. The creature twisted its huge body and dodged the turtle. However, the turtle reached out its head and bit the creature in the air. The creature screeched and curled its body around the turtle, biting at the turtle's neck with its crocodile-like mouth. The two creatures were at each other's throat, rolling around in the lake, breaking rocks as they went. The group were dumbstruck by the monster's fight and felt like watching a movie. Hansen was secretly exhilarated. Since the creature was able to match the turtle, it was very likely also a super creature. If that was the case, maybe he could get really lucky. As Hansen was imagining killing two super creatures at once, gobbling on their life essence and becoming a super aristocrat, he very soon realized that his dream was unlikely to be realized. The two creatures managed to knock the basalt ground open. Lava erupted from the gaps and met more water. Gray smoke once again filled the space. Roaring and rolling, the creatures continued their battle, shaking the entire underground cave. Chapter 338 Only Chance Since the scorching gray smoke was almost fatal, Jean Raiji, Jean Mingli, and Sun Ming were forced to step back. However, Hansen stayed still. This might be his best chance to kill a super creature. If he retreated at this point, he was not sure if he could pick up the life essence, and he definitely would not be able to gain any beast soul. Hansen yearned for a super beast soul even more than life essence. If he could obtain a powerful super beast soul, maybe he would be able to kill a super creature on his own, instead of hiding and sneaking around like this. Hansen, let's go. It's too dangerous over there, Jean Raiji shouted at Han Sr. You go first. I will stay a bit longer, Hansen gritted his teeth and said, initiating Jade Skin at the same time. With the protection from both the Sacred Blood Phantom Ant Armor and Jade Skin, Hansen was able to stay put and watch the two creatures fighting. Although his sight was blurred by the gray smoke, he did not dare to approach the creatures and had to wait for a chance. Roars and shrieks rang, lava and water clashed, and gray smoke rose. Hansen could occasionally catch a glimpse of the two creatures. Fairy Queen Hansen could not tell what was happening and it was becoming worse. He quickly took back his phantom ant armor and shape shifted into Fairy Queen. His hair became blonde and his armor red. Using the strong eyesight of the Fairy Queen, he continued to watch the fight. The Fairy Queen was indeed effective. Hansen saw that the creature had lost a huge piece of meat in the back of its head, its bones bared and its blood continued flowing. From a crack in its bones, Hansen could vaguely see its brain. If I could stab my spear in this crack, I would have a big chance to kill it directly. Hansen took out the spinning spear from his backpack. Of course, he did not want to go down just like this. 
He would not be the match to either the turtle or this creature. With one blow from either of them, his body would be destroyed. Hansen took out the spear to use it like an arrow. Hansen also summoned the horn bow and used heresy mantra and overload. Incredible strength filled his body, his muscles became as tough as iron, and his veins stood out all over. Hansen fixed his golden eyes upon the two creatures rolling around in the smoke, lava, water, and rocks. He pulled the horn bow to the fullest. The spear was too thick and long as an arrow. It was not an easy shot. However, Hansen had no other options. If he used the mutant black stinger arrow, it will not be enough to kill such a creature. Wait. I must wait for the perfect opportunity. Hansen stared at the creatures through the smoke. Although he was able to see the crack in its skull twice, Hansen did not shoot his spinning spear. The spinning spear was not a beast's soul arrow and could not be taken back once it was shot. He only had this one opportunity and had to choose the right moment to kill the creature with one strike. Otherwise, he would lose this only chance. Hansen's eyes were as calm as ice. Although that creature was severely injured, it was still able to fight the turtle. The turtle had the same thought as Han Senator, it also tried to bite the injury in the back of the creature's head, but the creature did not give it any chance. What is he trying to do? Sun Ming Wa could vaguely see that Han Sin was still standing on the cliff. Jean Raiji and Jean Mingli smiled bitterly. They had no idea what Han Sin was trying to do. Standing afar, they were already sweating like pigs from the unbearable heat. However, Han Sin stood still on the cliff like a tower in the gray smoke. Jean Raiji and Jean Mingli felt they had already lost to Hansen in Perseverance. Is he trying to kill the two creatures? Jean Mingli suddenly said, Is that even possible? Jean Raiji paused and replied, Killing a creature like that did not seem humanly possible. If it were anyone else, Jean Raiji would say it was impossible without question. Judging by how fiercely the creatures fought, it was easy to tell that killing them was beyond the skills of any human. However, it was Hansen who was standing there which made Jean Raiji feel it was possible. Hansen was someone Jean Raiji could not understand. Jean Raiji had seen a lot of people in glory shelter. However, he had never met anyone like Han Senator Han Sin's ability was too extraordinary for an unevolved person. Since it is him, maybe there is a chance? Jean Raiji said with a wry smile. Something was said with worries. It seems too risky. We should tell him to come back. When the two creatures were almost dying, he could then go snatch the meat. I'm afraid his goal is more than the meat, but also the beast's souls, Jean Raiji said, shaking his head. All of a sudden, they heard a blood-curdling cry. Chapter 339, Aqua Reaper Beast Soul. Right now, a cold light flashed in Han Sen's golden eyes. The spinning spear left the bow with a strong force, flying toward the screeching creature. Whoosh. The spear reached the back of the creature's head in the blink of an eye. Dang. The spear head was stuck in the crack of its bones and did not make it through. The bones were so stiff that the spear failed to break it. However, the spinning force did not end. Like a drill head, the spear continued to dig into the bones, making sparks and smoke. Go deeper. Hansen roared inwardly. This is the only chance he got. Crack. It seemed that Heaven was listening to haunt Senator the cracks and the creature's skull was broken further by the spinning spear. With a pop, the entire spear entered the skull from the crack. Roar. With another painful cry, the crocodile-like head of the creature raised up for a few seconds and suddenly collapsed, shaking the entire cave. Larva of Super Creature Aqua Reaper Kill. Beast Soul of Super Creature Aqua Reaper Gained. Life Essence Available. Consume its life essence to gain 0 to 10 super geno points randomly. Meet an edible. The voice Hansen heard made him jump. A super beast soul. I finally gained a super beast soul. Shortly, Hansen became calm again. It was not yet time to celebrate. The turtle was still there. Hansen now understood that the aqua reaper was still a larva. The reason why it could fight the turtle was likely that the turtle had just laid its eggs in the lava and was still weak. Even so, the turtle was too strong for Hansen to kill. At least before he had gained a strong weapon, there was no way he could hurt the turtle. After the Aqua Reaper was shot dead, the turtle threw a gaze at where Hansen was, sending a chill down his spine. However, the turtle merely looked at him, and then left the cave from the opening on the stone wall made by the Aqua Reaper. Hansen was overjoyed. If the turtle did not leave, he did not even dare to go down and collect the life essence. 
Before Hansen went down, he saw that the body of the Aqua Reaper gradually dissolved and disappeared in the thin air. Thump! A football-sized purple crystal fell into the lake along with the spinning spear. Hansen did not dare to hesitate anymore and quickly jumped from the cliff, summoned his sacred blood wings in the air, dived into the lake and dredged up the life essence and the spear. Licking at the purple crystal, Hansen heard the voice he had missed so much. Life essence of super creature Aqua Reaper consumed. No super geno point gained. The voice cheered Hansen up. He continued to look at the life essence of the Aqua Reaper, which became purple liquid in his mouth. As he swallowed the liquid, the coolness filled his body, nurturing every body cell. After licking for a while, Hansen eventually heard the voice telling him he had gained one super geno point. Fortunately, the life essence of Aqua Reaper was much smaller than that of the Golden Growler. If it was bigger, Hansen would not be able to finish eating it on the spot. Such a giant Aqua Reaper turned out to be a larva. If it was in the adult form, it would not be smaller than the Golden Growler. Maybe it was because the life essence was from a larva. Hansen had gained 7 Super Geno points from eating the entire crystal, which was less than what he used to get. However, Hansen was satisfied already. Originally, he thought it would take him a while longer before he could kill a super creature, but he just managed to kill one by chance and gain 7 Super Geno points and a Super Beast Soul. What a surprise! Looking at his Super Geno point count which was now 26, Hansen was very pleased. Sen, are you okay? Jean Raiji asked from the cliff. Jean Raiji, Jean Mingli and Sun Ming Wo were all looking down from the cliff and became excited when they saw Han Senior. I'm fine. The two creatures both left. Let's follow this opening to go out. I see light on the other side. This should be an exit, said Hansen, pointing at broken stone wall. After the three of them flew down with wings, they saw a valley from the opening. Going out of the cave and climbing up the valley, the group discovered that they were still in Copper Mountains. Returning to Glory's shelter, Hansen heard someone had seen the turtle crawling back into the ocean. Although it was a shame, Hansen was not too disappointed because he had gained a lot from the Aqua Reaper. Type of Super Beast Soul of Aqua Reaper, Parasite. Hansen studied the Beast Soul of the Aqua Reaper in the shelter and found that it was something he had never seen before, a Parasite Beast Soul. Like the Beast Soul of the Beetle Knight, it could not be summoned, and Hansen had no idea how to use it. However, normally speaking, a rare beast soul was a strong beast soul. If Hansen had high hopes for this beast soul and wished to find out more about it after he had access to the Skynet, there was no need for him to stay in Glory Shelter any longer, so when Sun Ming Wan decided to go to Steel Armor Shelter, Hansen followed them back. On the way, Hansen continued to think about the lava pool. Maybe the turtle had laid its eggs there, and it would be wonderful if he could fish those out. Because Dark Swamp was too dangerous, Jean Raiji did not choose to go via that route, but picked a longer and safer path. Hansen was in no hurry. He had Heresy Mantra, Overload, Panorama, and Kiting skills to practice on the way. When they finally reached Steel Armor Shelter, it was more than a month later. After returning to his room in Steel Armor Shelter, Hansen checked on the cloud beast he was feeding. Its body was becoming more and more transparent, and its progress was more or less what Hansen estimated. The Black Crystal should be able to make a super creature in about a year. What is this Black Crystal? It could even make super creatures. It seems that it's not getting any smaller either. What a wonder! Hansen again felt lucky that he had gained this treasure. It was indeed priceless. No one would believe him even if he told someone. After resting for two days in Blackhawk, Hansen did not immediately go on Gladiator. He had read more news from different shelters, trying to find the traces of a super creature again. Hansen had found a lot of leads, but they were all too far from Steel Armor Shelter, and it would not be easy for him to travel to those places in time. During Hansen's recess, Gambler told him via comlink that Yang Zikuen wanted to meet him to discuss a deal. Yang Zikuen did not tell Gambler the specifics of the deal and wanted to talk to Hansen alone. Chapter 340, Beast Souls of Second God Sanctuary Yang Zikuen did not ask Hansen to meet in God Sanctuary, but managed to get Hansen out of Blackhawk and took him to a private club. Hansen had little faith in the so-called closed-door military training at this point. Those with means could always open the doors. Mister, you did not go through all this trouble just to drink with me, right? Sitting on the couch, Hansen asked Yang Zikuen who was sitting opposite him. 
Brother, today I asked you to come both to learn boomerang skills from you and to ask for a favor. Yang Zikuan was very polite to Han Senator since Hansen beat him at boomerang. Yang Zikuan had thought of Hansen as a master. Yang Zikuan had spent a lot of time practicing butterfly boomerang recently, but the effect was not ideal. He had asked a lot of masters to gain a bit progress. However, if he wanted to reach Han Sen's level, it would take him years of hard work. Business first. You can learn boomerang from me anytime. I have a fair rate for tutoring, Han Sen smiled and said. Yang Zikuan gave him a thumbs up and said, Great. I love how direct you are. I'll be straightforward with you then. I've asked you to come today because I need some Sacred Blood Beast Souls and wonder if I can purchase some in Steel Armor Shelter. Sacred Blood Beast Souls are rare. Too many people need them, yet too few want to sell. Even if someone was to evolve and sell part of their Sacred Blood Beast Souls, those Beast Souls would most likely be reserved in advance. You should know that very well, Hansen pondered and said. When Qin Shin evolved, she only kept two Sacred Blood Beast Souls with her to enter Second God Sanctuary. Her other beast souls were reserved long before they went to an auction. Those who had purchased her sacred blood beast souls were probably extremely wealthy people like Yang Zikuin, Yuan, and Qing. After they got their hands on the sacred blood beast souls, it was highly unlikely that they would sell them again. These people normally chose to bring all the sacred blood beast souls with them when they became evolvers. Although the sacred blood beast souls from First God Sanctuary would not be considered strong in Second God Sanctuary in the early stage, they could still be helpful. That was one of the reasons why the sacred blood beast souls were so rare in First God Sanctuary. If it is easy, I will not need to ask for your help, brother. Yang Zikuan turned on the holographic video, and the image of a person appeared. The clip was pre-recorded. That person summoned his beast souls one by one and introduced them. After showing the clip, Yang Zikuan showed Han Sen in another clip that was similar to the first one. Brother, I want to trade with you for Sacred Blood Beast Souls. I can offer you Beast Souls or Warframes. This private club is specialized in Beast Soul dealing. You can have a look at the clips. If you have a certain Beast Soul in mind, I can trade with you. Most people here are not from Steel Armor Shelter, said Yang Zikuan. Han Sen's eyes lit up. He asked, does this private club also deal beast souls from Second God Sanctuary? Yang Zikuan was puzzled and explained to Han Sen that is possible. But most deals are conducted in the same phase. It would be harder to exchange across different phases. If I were to exchange Sacred Blood Beast Souls in the First God Sanctuary for Sacred Blood Beast Souls in the Second, what would that be like? Han Sen asked. His family was doing well financially, but he had hoped to gain some sacred blood beast souls for his mother to guarantee her safety in Second God Sanctuary. Second God Sanctuary was not like the first. It was extremely risky, and even the shelters were not 100% safe. Creatures would attack shelters in large groups in Second God Sanctuary, which was different from the first. If you wanted to trade, that's okay. But it depends on what kind of beast souls you have. Normally speaking, Three Sacred Blood Beast Souls from First God Sanctuary could be used to trade for one Sacred Blood Beast Soul in the second. After all, it is much more difficult to gain a Sacred Blood Beast Soul in Second God Sanctuary, explained Yang Zikuin briefly. Hansen pondered for a while and said to Yang Zikuin, I do have some Sacred Blood Beast Souls on hand, but I am not interested in anything else but the Sacred Blood Beast Souls in Second God Sanctuary and the trade must be conducted in Sapphire Shelter of Second God Sanctuary. Yang Zikuan looked at Hansen and asked, Brother, do you have any requirement for the types of beast souls you want? I would prefer beast soul armor, followed by beast soul mount and beast soul wings. Hansen wanted to get some beast souls that could keep his mother safe. When he evolved and entered Second God Sanctuary, it would be easy for him to get beast souls and meat for his mother. The most important thing was to keep his mother alive. Although Luo Sulan was located in a large human shelter and all she did was killing ordinary creatures and primitive creatures at most, it was hard to say what would happen in Second God Sanctuary. Many human shelters be destroyed overnight. Give me a minute. Yang Zikuan checked his comm link and dialed a number. A man of about 60 years old appeared in the holographic image. Young master. The man bowed to Yang Zikuan. Mr. Su, could you check for me how many Sacred Blood Beast souls we could use in Sapphire Shelter of Second God Sanctuary? Asked Yang Zikuan. One moment, young master. I will report to you when I have the information. 
Yang Zikuan turned off his comm link and said to Hansen with a smile, Brother, let's see if anything interests you. If there is something you like, then we will continue our discussion. Hansen nodded and admired Yang Zikuan's masterful manner. Indeed, Yang Zikuan was the grandson of a demigod. Although he was still young, he treated everyone gracefully. Shortly, Mr. Su knocked on the door in person and showed a video clip to Yang Zikuan while explaining, Currently, we have three sacred blood beast souls that we can use in Sapphire's shelter. One is. After he had explained everything, Mr. Su stepped back and waited for Yang Zikuan to speak. Brother, what do you think? Yang Zikuan asked Han Sr. Mr. Su looked at Hansen in surprise. He knew very well Yang Zikuan's character and thought Hansen must be someone important so that Yang Zikuan will treat him this way. I am very interested in the sacred blood armor and sacred blood mount. I have three sacred blood beast souls that I want to use to exchange for those two. Do you think that's doable? Hansen pondered and asked. Chapter 341 Cross Border Trade Mr. Su frowned upon Hansen's words. Although the sacred blood beast souls in First God Sanctuary were rare, the normal value of a sacred blood beast soul from the first and one from the second were three to one. Although the sacred blood armor and sacred blood mount in Sapphire Shelter were not the best, he would not necessarily trade them for even six sacred blood beast souls in First God Sanctuary. However, Hansen was trying to exchange for both using just three, which made Mr. Su sneer. Brother, can you show us the beast souls you have? Yang Zikuan said with a smile. Hansen summoned his three-blade harpoon, brandished it briefly and said, I think you should recognize this three-blade harpoon. Huang Fu Pingqing once showed it at an auction. It is rather sharp among sacred blood weapons. Mr. Su was dazed. He had heard of this harpoon. In fact, they did a lot of business with Ares Martial Hall. And he had thought about acquiring this harpoon before. In terms of sharpness, the three-blade harpoon was more than just rather sharp, but definitely one of the sharpest weapon in First God Sanctuary. Mr. Su did not expect Hansen would produce this weapon first. It was a top-notch sacred blood beast soul. Normally speaking, one would not let go of it. Brother, are you really going to sell this? Yang Zikuan asked Hansen in surprise. Sure. Hansen smiled. This three-blade harpoon did not mean as much to him at this point. He could not kill a super creature with this harpoon. And since the harpoon was not a sword, he could not attach the devil sword to it. Hansen still had the pair of skeleton's daggers, which were as sharp as the three-blade harpoon. Although they were not as valuable as the beast soul, to Hansen, they functioned equally well. Therefore, Hansen wanted to sell his harpoon. For the second piece of beast soul, Hansen summoned the tornado wolf. A mount? Asked Yang Zikuan, gazing at the tornado wolf. Yang Zikuan had never seen such a mount before and did not know what it could do. Mr. Su frowned slightly. Although the three-blade harpoon was great, a sacred blood mount from Second God Sanctuary was definitely worth at least three sacred blood mount in the first. Hansen smiled and explained, it is a mount called Tornado Wolf. It is nothing but fast. You should have heard about Blast Horse? Of course, Blast Horse is the fastest mount in First God Sanctuary, Yang Zikuan nodded and said. This Tornado Wolf is slightly faster than Blast Horse. What do you think of it now? said Hansen casually. Mr. Su stared at the Tornado Wolf and asked, Are you serious? Is it really faster than Blast Horse? If you don't believe me, you can try it out. If it is not faster than Blast Horse, I will give it to you for free, said Hansen with a smile. There were a lot of videos of Blast Horse on the Skynet. Hansen had no doubt that the Tornado Wolf was faster. Mr. Su changed his look. If this Tornado Wolf was really faster than Blast Horse, its value was hard to say. Although a Sacred Blood mount from the First God Sanctuary was not as valuable as a Sacred Blood one from the Second, it still very much depended on what sort of mount it was. If the Tornado Wolf was the fastest mount in First God Sanctuary, then it was invaluable. Fantastic, Yang Zikuan said. It seemed that he liked the Tornado Wolf quite a lot. Mr. Su now had high hopes for Han Sin's third beast soul. Although the two beast souls Hansen had shown them were both top-notch, he still needed the third beast soul to wow him before he would consider the deal. As he was still thinking, Hansen had summoned the third beast soul. Hansen suddenly shape-shifted into a giant bear. A shape-shifting beast soul. Yang Zikuan and Mr. Su were overjoyed. Sacred blood shape-shifting beast souls were very rare, 
and the one Han Sen was showing could even use different martial arts and weapons. A beast soul like this would be bid to the sky. Han Sen took back the beast soul and said to Yang Zikuin, The sacred blood shape-shifting beast soul is named Ghost Eyed Bear. It could greatly enhance one's strength and speed. If I were to trade these three beast souls for the two sacred blood beast souls you have in Second God's Sanctuary, what would you think? Let's do it, Yang Zikuin said without hesitation. Although he would not profit much from the deal, it was a great deal nonetheless. Hansen had produced three excellent beast souls, which were the top in their own type. In addition, Yang Zikuin liked the three sacred blood beast souls very much, especially the sacred blood ghost eyed bear. Mr. Su had changed his point of view on Han Senator. Three sacred blood beast souls like this were so hard to come by that they were totally enough to match the two sacred blood beast souls they have in Second God's Sanctuary. Yang Zikuin asked Mr. Su to prepare the contract. After they both signed, Mr. Su arranged for a guy to transfer the two sacred blood beast souls to Luo Sulan. Hansen called his mother and asked her to receive the two beast souls. With the sacred blood armor and sacred blood mount, even if Luo Sulan was in danger, she would be able to keep herself alive. Hansen and Yang Zikuin used the teleport device in the private club to enter Steel Armor Shelter and completed the deal. Hansen had wanted to do this for a long time, but he hadn't found the right opportunity or people whom he trusted. Eventually, he was able to accomplish the deal. After completing the deal, both parties were satisfied about the transaction. Originally, Yang Zikuin only wished to gain one or two sacred blood beast souls. In the end, he was able to obtain three top-notch beast souls, which were all practical as well. Brother, you have so many excellent beast souls. Can you show us a few more? Yang Zikuin looked at Hansen excitedly. Mr. Su also looked at Hansen curiously. A person that had so many amazing beast souls triggered his curiosity. Since Hansen was selling incredible beast souls, what beast souls would he keep for himself? Chapter 342 Trial Hansen was not able to refuse them and summoned the sacred blood phantom and armor. Yang Zikuin was dumbstruck. He asked directly, Brother, could you sell me this armor? I will trade the other sacred blood beast soul and sapphire shelter for this one. One for one. It is just sacred blood armor. Why do you want it so much? Hansen gazed at Yang Zikuin in surprise. Yang Zikuin said quickly, this armor is so beautiful that few women could resist its temptation. Realizing what he had said, Yang Zikuin hastily changed the subject. If you don't need it, you have to sell it to me. Hansen quickly took back the sacred blood phantom ant armor and said with a wry smile, I have already agreed to sell it to someone else if I were to sell this armor. Although Yang Zikuin was very interested in the armor, he did not insist after hearing Hansen's words. After Hansen returned, he organized his beast souls. The sacred blood beast souls he had were Black Beetle Armor, Bloody Slayer, Purple Winged Dragon, Fairy Queen, Horn Bell, Golden Rock Worm King, Phantom Ant, Three-Eyed Cat, Color Shifter, Holy Angel, Beetle Knight, Flame Lieutenant, and Devil Sword. Last but not least was the Super Beast Soul Aqua Reaper. Although Hansen did not know how to use it at this point, Hansen believed it must be an incredible beast soul. He wanted to take a part of these beast souls to Second God's Sanctuary. After all, he did not have any strong background and must rely on himself after entering Second God's Sanctuary. In the early stage, these beast souls could still provide some help. There were, of course, some beast souls that he did not need. For example, the Phantom Ant and Black Beetle functioned the same, so he could sell the Phantom Ant armor to Lin Bei Fong. Although Three-Eyed Cat was a sacred blood pet, it probably would not be of too much use in Second God's Sanctuary. And the Horn Bow was the same. Hansen could use those beast souls to trade for the beast souls of Second God's Sanctuary, which could help him in the future. As for what to keep when he evolved, he would have to decide later. Since Hansen had not found traces of super creatures near Steel Armor Shelter, he did not enter God's Sanctuary again and returned to improve himself. Hansen had not yet reached the ultimate level of overload, which was his biggest concern. The best way to practice overload was to put himself under extreme pressure. Hansen pondered and decided that the gravity trainer was a great option, which would put burden on his body all over as long as he adjusted the parameters. When he was about to go inside a gravity trainer on campus, Hansen heard someone calling him. Professor Yen? Hansen looked at the person in surprise. 
According to his impression, Professor Yin was someone meticulous and inflexible both in and out of the classroom. Hansen thought something must be up for Professor Yin to talk to him. Professor Yin walked to Hansen and asked, Hansen, I need to collect some data for a study and hope that you can help me. You will get extra credits as a reward. Hansen was interested. His credits would decide his rank in the military upon graduation. Because he had missed many classes, although he had enough credits, it might still be hard for him to become a major. Since Professor Yin was offering him credits, Hansen was interested, but he was scared that he would be turned into a guinea pig. Clearing his throat, Hansen asked, Of course, I would love to help you. I'm just wondering what kind of data are you looking for and whether I would be capable to provide them. Professor Yin just sent a file to Hansen and told him to come to the lab 8 a.m. the next day. Watching Professor Yin leave, Hansen was slightly upset. However, he knew that the professor was someone who was more or less a social misfit, so he was not offended. After reviewing the files, Hansen understood why Professor Yin would find him. The study Professor Yin was doing was titled Unevolved Geno Point Search. Professor Yin was collecting the steepest surge among the unevolved, which was why he had come to Han Sr. However, Hansen was having a headache about this. It was easy for him to increase his force in a short amount of time, but his strength was too strong for an unevolved person. If Professor Yin was able to record his authentic data, Hansen might be cut into pieces for the research. However, if he did not use all he got and used Jade Skin to control his strength instead, the data would be useless to Professor Yin. Hansen did not want to mislead a scholar was very much committed to his own study. Hansen, I have perfected my archery skills. Let's do a showdown again. This time I will not lose to you. When Hansen was having a headache, Jing Jia walked toward him and challenged him again. Jing Jia, this is perfect timing. Seeing Jing Jia, Hansen was quite delighted. Jing Jia was dazed and did not understand why Hansen would say perfect timing. Nor did he know why Hansen was smiling at him. Jing Jia suddenly smelled something fishy. Let's go to the shooting range for another match, said Jing Jia though feeling weird. All right. However, if you lose again, you must do something for me. Said Hansen, grinning at Jing Jia. What is it? Jing Jia looked at Hansen vigilantly. Professor Yin asked me to take part in a trial for him. If you lose, you need to come with me and help with it, said Han Sr. Okay, agreed Jing Jia. In less than half an hour, Jing Jia left the shooting range following Han Senator. He lost to Hansen once again. Remember what you have promised me. See you tomorrow in the martial arts lab at 8 a.m. Hansen waved to Jing Jia with a huge grin and returned to the gravity trainer. The next day, Hansen would bring Jing Jia along to the lab and hide his own ability, letting Jing Jia's data speak for itself. By that time, Professor Yin would be more interested in Jing Jia for sure. Since I would be the one who introduces Jing Jia, I would still get the extra credits, right? Hansen entered a gravity trainer with the thought. Chapter 343, Primal Innocence Fang Guotao was a renowned martial arts specialist who had become popular because he invented a hypergeno art named Primal Innocence. Among the unevolved, Primal Innocence was the fad of the moment. For the five young men out of ten had read Fang's book elaborating on Primal Innocence. The reason why this hypergeno art was popular was its concept, the innocent has no fear. Its core value was that humans had unlimited potentials, but due to negative emotions such as fear, humans had become their own prisoners, which made it hard for them to reach their potentials. In order to develop one's potentials and increase one's abilities, the key was to keep one's innocence and lose the fear. This way, one could continue to break free and increase one's abilities. Because of the popularity of primal innocence, Black Hawk had also invited Fong Guotao to give a speech. Many students of Black Hawk had come down to the auditorium for the speech. Many became motivated, as if they were to come fearless demigods in the next moment. Naturally, Hansen had no time for the speech, and he was not at all interested in Primal Innocence. Primal Innocence was so popular that even Shirji Kong bought the book to study. Hansen scanned through the book and found most of its contents pointless. Few people could reach the state of being fearless, unless they were brainwashed or hypnotized. Even if one could reach that state, it would be more harm than good. The ability of feeling fear was an important function of mankind. It was like the ability of sensing pain, which was a guideline telling you what to do and what not to do. 
Although this guideline could be off, it would be even worse without it. If someone lost the ability to sense pain after falling asleep, he would not be alarmed when burned or attacked. The alarm system would be down. It was the same in the case of fear. If one did not know what was fear, the person must be a lunatic who dared to do anything. Therefore, Hansen was not interested in Fang Guotao or his primal innocence, and thus would not listen to his speech. However, Fang Guotao was a flamboyant person. He would not be satisfied with a speech in the auditorium and had to demonstrate the magical effects of primal innocence in the training hall where Hansen was. The potentials of mankind are unlimited and primal innocence will teach you how to reach your full potentials. I'll demonstrate that with the gravity trainer. Fang Guotao pointed at a student and said, Mister, please come over here. Me? The students pointed at himself, surprised. Yes, you, replied Fang Guotao assertively. The student hesitated for a moment and then walked toward Fang Guotao. Fang Guotao asked, What is your name? My name is Wang Hong, answered the student. Wang Hong, could you tell me what are your limits when using the gravity trainer? Fang Guotao asked. I could barely pass the 12.0 test, replied Wang Hong. Great. If I tell you now that you can pass a 13.0 test right away, would you believe me? That is unlikely, right? Wang Hong knew his phone limits. He could barely pass a 12.0 test and would definitely fail a 13.01. You don't believe me? I will teach you right away primal innocence and then you can immediately pass a 13.0 test," Fang Guotao said and turned on his own smart device, showing Wang Hong some tutorials of primal innocence. Wang Hong did some movements as Fang Guotao asked and listened to the explanation of primal innocence before he started a test in a gravity trainer. The parameters were set to 13.0 and Wang Hong successfully passed the test, which amazed the audience and gave rise to waves of applause. Although the improvement was only 1.0, it was quite something for military school students. After all, it was extremely difficult to enhance one's ability after a certain point. Next, Fang Guotao picked several more students for the same experiment, and they all made some improvements, which convinced more students. After coming out the gravity trainer, Hansen was dazed after seeing so many people in the hall. After a while, he realized that Fang Guotao was making his speech there so Hansen stayed and watched. After watching for a while, Hansen became impatient. In fact, Fong's methods were not that great. Although Primal Instance was effective, it depended on who the user was. All the students picked by Fong Guotao were timid and inconfident. Normally speaking, people like this could tap into their potentials easily once their confidence was boosted. In addition, there was tricks similar to Overload and Primal Innocence. Therefore, it was not hard at all to improve their testing results. Hansen was totally able to demonstrate the same thing himself, so he was bored. Without the motivational words, primal innocence was nothing compared to overload. The psychological suggestions made people blind, and Hansen was not interested in that idea. However, he had to admit that primal innocence might be useful for those who lacked confidence. Hansen decided to go back to the gravity trainer instead of wasting his time listening to the speech. In Fang Guotao's eyes, Hansen's move stood out. All the students were listening attentively except for one. Mister, are you going to try primal innocence in the gravity trainer right away? Please wait a second. There are some techniques that you have to understand before you try primal innocence out. Come over here. I would love to instruct you on them. Fang Guotao thought Hansen was so motivated by his speech that the student wanted to try it out in a gravity trainer. Chapter 344. Is he a plan? Seeing everyone gazing at himself and hearing Fang Guotao's words, Hansen was mortified. Although he was not interested in primal innocence, Fang Guotao was invited by the school and never offended him, so he decided not to embarrass Fang. Reluctantly, Hansen walked toward Fang Guotao. What is your name? Fang Guotao repeated the process and asked the questions. Hansen answered everything and simply wanted to go back to his training as soon as possible. Fang Guotao asked what level Hansen could pass in the gravity trainer and Hansen answered 13.0. Fang Guotao said he was able to raise Hansen's level to 14.0. Hansen did everything he said and indeed passed the 14.0 test. Fang Guotao was expecting applause, but there was none. All the student cast an odd look to his side, but Fang Guotao did not know what had happened. He almost thought his fly was open, looked down and found nothing wrong. Fang Guotao was puzzled. 
As an evolver, he did not pay much attention to military schools, lest the military school students. There was no way he would know how famous Hansen was. When Hansen said 13.0, his schoolmates were already amused. When he passed the 14.0 test, they were about to burst out laughing. They had only one thought on their mind. Is the genius a plan? Although they did not know specifically what Hansen's fitness index was, they did know that Hansen beats Jing Jia whose fitness index was more than 15. There was no way Hansen would be weaker than 15. Hansen was only trying to get it over with as fast as he could, while in others' eyes, he was obviously a plant. When Hansen was ready to step down, someone in the audience yelled, Genius, you need to be more professional if you're a plant. You can pass a 14.0 test single-handedly. What kind of improvement is that? Haha, uh -huh, brother, you must be kidding. This is blatant fraud, lol. Now this is highly inappropriate, genius. Do it again, genius. The students would not let Hansen off the hook easily. It was rare that they could see Hansen perform, and they would not let go of the opportunity. Seeing the reaction of the audience, Fang Guotao became nervous. Although Primal Innocence was effective, it depended on who the user was. Hansen was pretending the entire time, while Fang Guotao was not able to tell he was faking it. The fact that Hansen was able to control his strength so well indicated that Hansen had both strong confidence and abilities. On those who were confident, Primal Innocence was less effective. On someone like Hansen, Primal Innocence basically had no effect. Fang Guotao regretted so much that he had called this person. How could he ever expect this to happen? Professor, do it again. If you can help Hansen increase by 1.0, then I would become a true believer. All the students were kicking up a fuss. Fang Guotao looked at Hansen, and Hansen threw a glance at Fang Guotao. Fang Guotao walked to Hansen, patted him on the shoulder, and said in an intimate tone, Hansen, it seems that you are a popular figure in Black Hawk. While saying that, Fang Guotao hugged Han Senator as Han Sen was wondering why Fang Guotao was being so passionate. He heard Fang whispering into his ear, Fake it again, please. You will be rewarded. How? Han Sen whispered back. Since Han Sen already faked it once, Fang Guotao thought he would try his luck. To his surprise, Han Sen answered him. Fang Guotao became overjoyed and whispered, Whatever you want. I promise. Okay. Han Sen nodded. Fang Guotao was the guest of the school and had promised him benefits, so there was no need for Hansen to embarrass him in public. Furthermore, primal innocence was quite helpful to build up one's confidence and its harm was minimal, which was why primal innocence was so popular. Otherwise, the Alliance would not allow it to be circulated and the leadership of Black Hawk would never have invited Fang Guotao as a guest speaker. Getting a yes from Hansen, Fang Guotao was pleased and let go of Hansen naturally. He said to Hansen in an authoritative tone, Hansen, be honest with me, what is your level? I am confident in primal innocence. It will help you. Hansen played along again and increased his performance level. He was not sure whether his schoolmates would buy it, but he had done his best. Fortunately, his schoolmates were satisfied with the 16.0 that Hansen showed them. After finishing his speech, Fang Guotao talked to Hansen over Comlink and asked him to meet in a private room in a cafeteria on campus. Hansen did not want anything from Fang in the first place, so he did not even give Fang Guotao his number. However, Fang had somehow found out about his contact information and insisted that Hansen meet him. Hansen had to go in the end. After arriving at the private room, Fang Guotao immediately took Hansen's hand and ordered the most expensive food and drinks on campus. Thank you so much. Hansen. Otherwise, I would not know how to save the day. To Hansen's dismay, Fang Guotao did not even look like the master he pretended to be. Hansen even doubted whether Fang Guotao really invented primal innocence. The person who could invent primal innocence must be someone with a strong mind. This Fang Guotao, however, looked more like a con artist. Chapter 345 Risky Practice Very soon, Hansen was certain that Fang Guotao was not the author of Primal Innocence, but a con artist. Brother, your faith is strong. I have never seen a young man so sure of himself under the influence of Primal Innocence, Fang Guotao said to Hansen, holding the student's hand. Brother Fang, you are the true inventor of Primal Innocence. Hansen was wondering whether Fang Guotao had invented Primal Innocence, but he did not want to offend the guy. Fang Guotao did not mean to hide anything and chuckled. Brother, 
I will not lie to you. I am not the one to invent such a great thing. This is written in a book passed down from my previous generations named Innocence Mantra. Unfortunately, the mantra was incomplete, and I based my invention on the remaining chapters. I need to thank my ancestors for my good life. Hansen did not understand why Fang Guotao would tell him everything since they had just met. What Fang Guotao said next appalled him even more. Brother, I think your fitness level should be more than 16, right? Fang Guotao asked Hansen with his eyes lit up. More or less that. Hansen thought, here we go. Fang Guotao looked Hansen up and down and said, I am not good at other things, but an eye for talent. I think you are a well-rounded fighter and should have high scores in every aspect. Hansen did not say anything but grinned at Fang Guotao. Fang Guotao said hastily, don't get the wrong idea, brother. I'm not trying to be a snoop. All I want to say is that, on average, an unevolved person could reach 15 maximum, even with the sacred Geno points maxed out. You are a rare talent and have a higher fitness level than that. If you work together with me, we could make big money. Hansen almost vomited blood. He eventually understood why Fang Guotao was being so truthful with him. The guy was asking him to be a real plant. If it was before, Hansen would have agreed without thinking twice. However, he did not need the money now, so there was no need for him to do something like this. Brother, I am still in the military school. Even after I graduate, I will have to serve in the military. I'm afraid there is no chance we could work together, said Han Sr. Fang Guotao became upset. He thumped his chest and said, Brother, you think too little of me. I want to work with you exactly because you are about to enter the military. Why? Hansen looked at Fang Guotao surprised. He wondered how this con artist could wiggle his way into the military. Fang Guotao chuckled and said, Because of the family legacy and my own work, I am considered a martial art master not only in academia, but also the military. Primal innocence is almost made a mandatory subject in the military, so I would have a lot more to opportunities to give speeches there. Hansen thought it was reasonable. Fang Guotao and Primal Innocence was indeed extremely popular currently. It was something effective on potential developments. Although it was not too strong, it almost suited everybody. Once it's official, I would be made a general. Although I would not have too much actual power, I could always ask for you to be my guard. Once you start to serve, I... Fang Guotao continued. Brother, let's forget about it. I have not even graduated, he stopped him quickly. He was not at all interested in being Fang Guotao's guard. As a con man, Fang Guotao immediately understood what Han Sen was thinking and did not bring it up again. However, he was still implying the benefits Han Sen could gain. Brother, at your level, you don't need me at all. Your guard has to be at least an evolver. I am merely an unevolved person and it would not serve you well, said Han Sen with a smile. Let's forget about this then. In the future, if you changed your mind, you can always come to me said Fang Guotao. Hansen did not know what Fang Guotao had seen in himself. Either way, Hansen was not interested. After the meal, Hansen went back to the gravity trainer and started to train again. What a shame. Watching Hansen leave, Fang Guotao's smile disappeared. He licked his lips and had a sinister look on his face. Returning to the gravity trainer, Hansen set the parameters around 25. Hansen's fitness index was a little more than 20 at this point. Without using Heresy Mantra, it was still hard for him to pass the 25.0 test using only Overload. Heresy Mantra did not have much side effects, because all his organs had been strengthened during the first stage. However, Overload was completely different. It was simply squeezing clean every last drop of his potentials with no holdback. Therefore, Overload was extremely dangerous. Once he went overboard, his body would collapse right away. There were 10 items in the test of the gravity trainer. Hansen had only finished three when he was completely soaked in his own sweat. His entire body became red like a cooked shrimp. The scarier thing was that his body temperature was much higher than someone with a fever, which was already under the effect of jade skin. It felt like all his body cells were moaning. Hansen gave up on continuing his training. The gravity within the device gradually fell back to normal. Hansen lay on the floor like a dying dog breathing heavily. Chapter 346 Go Player and Stone Hansen was convinced that he had strong potentials. After all, he had already gained Super Geno points. However, in order to tap into his potentials, he had to work extremely hard. 
He could understand his weaknesses and strengths better under extreme conditions with overload. This way, he could develop his full potentials. A high level of understanding of his own body was necessary. He had to know exactly where he could work harder. Otherwise, he might push himself too hard so that his body would collapse. The process of practicing overload was a process to learn how to control his body. He had to make sure that each bone, muscle, and body cell were working at the limits, but not over the limits, which was the ultimate goal. Certainly, Hansen had not reached that level just yet. Because of Jade's kin, he had much better understanding and control of his body than an average person, which was conducive to his overload practice. On the other hand, when he continued to push his limits, Hansen felt he was making a big progress with Jade's kin as well. It seemed that he was about to complete the first stage. Again, when he had recovered, Hansen once again turned on the gravity trainer and tried to make his body function better in sweat and heat. Hansen had control himself very well so that his body would not be damaged, thanks to Jade's kin. Brother Han, I will have a small party tomorrow. Would you come? Wang Ming Ming asked Hansen with her eyes wide. What party? Hansen was puzzled. You will know after you arrive. Please come. Wang Ming Ming said. All right, agreed Han Senator Wang Ming Ming rarely asked him of anything. Since it was just a party, of course Hansen would not turn her down. Wang Ming Ming was delighted and told Hansen the time of the party and that she would come to pick him up. When it was time, Hansen realized that the party was not on campus. Wang Ming Ming took Hansen to a private garden with food and drinks already arranged. Hansen found a spot and started to eat, while Wang Ming Ming went to change. Hansen, how come you're here? Someone exclaimed when seeing Hansen in the garden. Tang Jinliu. Hansen was also dazed. He did not expect to see Tang Jinliu there. You're connected to the Wangs? Tang Jinliu sat down next to Hansen and asked. Wang Ming Ming is my schoolmate. She was the one who invited me to this party, Hansen answered. Tang Jinliu looked at Hansen oddly and said, you're not telling me that you don't know today is her birthday. Hansen was surprised and said, Today is Ming Ming's birthday? You really don't know? Ha ha. It seemed that you two were quite tight. Tang Jin Liu patted Hansen on the shoulder, laughing. Hansen was a bit concerned. Had he known that it was Wang Ming Ming's birthday, he would have prepared her a gift. But it might be too late for that. Hansen searched his pockets and found nothing that he could give her. Tang, do you have an extra present? Could I borrow some? Hansen looked to Tang Jin Liu expectantly. I only have one gift. In addition, how can you borrow the present? Tang Jin Liu said with his lips curled. Hansen wanted to say something, but he saw more people entering the garden. They were mostly in their 20s and 30s. Among the men and women, Hansen spotted Son of Heaven and Wang Fu Ping Ching. The birthday party was successful, and nobody paid Hansen any mind. Hansen continued to fill his stomach while Tang Jin Liu was socializing with men and women in the high society. Son of Heaven had gained much more repose. He was no longer that domineering and overbearing person in steel armor shelter. When do you plan to evolve? As Hansen was eating, Son of Heaven walked to him and asked in a plain tone. In two or three years, Hansen paused and answered. He felt like Son of Heaven had become a different person. Maybe he was possessed or something. Son of Heaven curled his lips into a strange smile. He raised a glass to his lips and sipped some wine. I know what you're thinking, but since I entered Second God's Sanctuary, I no longer treated you as my enemy. My true enemy could only be an Evolver, which you are not. As long as you do not enter Second God's Sanctuary, you will not understand what true strength is and how naive you are. In the future, if you are sent a Dark Lord Shelter, you can join my team. You're a good archer, and I need someone like you. Evolve soon and stop playing house in First God Sanctuary. Son of Heaven said and patted Han Sen on the shoulder. Then he walked to a corner and sat down, observing the crowd in the party. Han Sen was surprised by Son of Heaven's behaviors. If Son of Heaven wanted to kill him, he would not feel much. However, Son of Heaven no longer cared. This shift was alarming to Han Sr. Han Sen could feel that Son of Heaven no longer thought of him as an opponent. The guy treated Han Sen as a stone in the hand of a Go player. A player would never treat the stone as his opponent or his enemy. You only evolved a few years earlier, and that does not mean you were superior. Hansen curled his lips and did not treat Son of Heaven too seriously. If he entered Second God's Sanctuary before he maxed out on his Super Geno points, that would be a real loss. 
Chapter 347 Unworthy as an Enemy I don't understand why you're lingering in First God's Sanctuary, said Huang Fu Piching with a sigh after Son of Heaven left. I need to stay for lots of reasons, said Hansen calmly. You must be maxing out on your sacred Geno points? Come to Second God's Sanctuary. Everything begins there. Huang Fu Pingqing tried to persuade him. I still need a lot more sacred Geno points. It will probably still take me at least two years, said Hansen with a smile. Huang Fu Pingqing stared at Hansen for a moment and said with disappointment, Believe it or not, I never meant you any harm. Come to Second God's Sanctuary so that you can be truly strong. I believe you, Hansen said, blinking. Huang Fu Pingqing rolled her eyes at him and said, Do not linger upon any romantic relationships. It would not serve you well. You know what my cousin said about you? He said if you evolved too late, you would not even be worthy of being his enemy, let alone friend. Huang Fu Pingqing thought the reason why Hansen would not leave First God's Sanctuary was because he had feelings for Wang Ming Ming, which surprisingly annoyed her. Watching Huang Fu Pingqing leave, Hansen said to himself with a faint smile, unworthy of being his enemy? Son of Heaven is so full of s asterisk hashtag t. I hope you all have the same confidence to say that after I go to Second God's Sanctuary. Hansen paid no mind to what Son of Heaven and Wang Fu Pingqing had said and continued to eat and drink. Brother, this is my last birthday in military school. I don't know if I will have another opportunity to invite you to my birthday party. So, Wang Ming Ming said apologetically when she eventually had time to come to Han Senior. Whenever you ask me to come, I will come. The next time, you have to remind me it is your birthday so that I could buy a present for you. You know, I don't have the best memory in the world, said Hansen with a smile. The best present is your presence, Wang Ming Ming said, blushing a little. That is very sweet, but I have to give you a gift. Hansen pondered, wrote something on a napkin, and gave it to Wang Ming Ming. He said, consider this your birthday present. Sister, happy birthday. Thank you. Wang Ming Ming started to read the napkin cheerfully. Both Son of Heaven and Wang Fu Pingqing noticed what was happening and wondered what Hansen had written. It said, Wang Ming Ming could use this coupon to make one of her wishes come true, Han Senior. Son of Heaven curled his lips with contempt and left. In his view, it was a cliché to chase after a girl. If it was any other occasion, it might be okay. However, in Wang Ming Ming's birthday party, the fact that this was all Hansen had to offer showed how incompetent Hansen was. Wang Ming Ming was the princess of the walks. She could basically have anything in the world, and how could an unevolved person ever fulfill her wish? Hansen was simply unable to give Wang Ming Ming a satisfactory gift. Brother, can I ask for anything? Wang Ming Ming asked expectantly. Anything I can do, Hansen smiled and said. Thank you, brother. This is the best present I have received today. Wang Ming Ming put away the coupon carefully. It seemed she did not plan to use it right away. After returning to Blackhawk, Hansen did not go back to the gravity trainer since it was too late. He lay on his bed and browsed the Skynets using his comlink. Although he did not care what others said, Hansen wanted to max out his Super Geno points and evolve as soon as possible. There was a lot of information on God's Sanctuary on the Skynet. Hansen's main focus was the creature activities near Steel Armor Shelter and its neighboring shelters. It was not easy to fish out useful information on the Skynet. Hansen had been paying attention to news every day, but did not have much luck. Suddenly, a post caught Hansen's attention. It was posted by someone in Steel Armor Shelter, saying that he had spotted a phoenix in Devil Desert. Since images could not be recorded in God's Sanctuary, the poster with the ID Rainbow Man simply described what the phoenix looked like. According to his description, the creature was somewhat like the legendary creature. However, all the creatures looking like phoenix were discovered in higher phases. Han Sound had never heard of a phoenix-like creature in First God Sanctuary. Many people replied to mock Rainbow Man, but Rainbow Man insisted that he had seen that creature and described it with more details. According to Rainbow Man, the creature he saw looked like a peacock with golden flames as its flesh and feather. In addition, Rainbow Man said when he spotted the phoenix-like creature, it was resting on a huge tree. When the creature left, Rainbow Man went to check the tree and found it was turned into charcoal. There was never any fire, and the tree was still intact. However, the entire tree was carbonized. Hansen did not know whether Rainbow Man was telling the truth. However, it was a lead and gave him some hope. 
He replied and asked where Rainbow Man had spotted the creature. Shortly, Rainbow Man answered Han Sen and said he was not sure how to describe the location. Indeed, the desert did not have much reference for a clear description. However, Rainbow Man said he knew how to find the burnt tree. Hansen hesitated and sent Rainbow Man a private message, saying he wanted to pay the guy to take him to the tree. However, Rainbow Man did not reply until Hansen went to bed. The next morning, Hansen got up and went to Professor Yen. Last time he brought Jing Jia with him, whose testing scores interested Professor Yen as Hansen expected. However, Hansen was not off the hook and had to check in with Professor Yen once every few days. Although Hansen did not want to fake the data, he had to. If his fitness level was published, there must be a ton of troubles, which was the least thing Hansen needed. All he wanted at this point was to max out on his Super Geno points. Chapter 348 Feels Like Queen Hansen arrived at Professor Yan's lab and completed the test. Afterwards, he watched Jing Jia's test. The test Jing Jia was doing was completely different from the one Hansen did. Jing Jia was using very special devices, and it should have been Hansen in his place. Hansen watched for a while and felt interested. He asked a researcher he had become familiar with, Brother, what is the device that Jing Jia is using? It looks quite impressive. Qin Jiming smiled and said, It is called Cell Activator, something we have developed specifically for this study. It vitalizes the body cells and keeps it active, so that all functions of the body could be enhanced. This way, we could determine one's maximum fitness. Watching Jing Jia shaking naked all over in the liquid tank, Hansen thought to himself, I wonder if the device is conducive to my progress in overload. But if I were to do a test like this, all my secrets would be exposed. Throwing a look at Jing Jia who was twitching, Hansen thought, Sorry brother, I promise I'll teach you something more. When Hansen was about to leave, Qin Jiming suddenly smiled at Hansen and said, Would you like to give it a shot? Not really. Hansen shook his head. Qin Jiming gave Hansen a bottle of solution and a small gadget that looks like a watch. This is the testing solution. It would not affect your body and is only used to test your body cells. Drink this before you go to sleep and do the test when you get up, then you will find out how much potential your body cells have. After getting that data, we could determine to what extent is your body cells could be activated. How do I use this? Hansen asked Qin Jiming, pointing to the gadget. Although he did not want to be the subject of the trial, he was curious about his potentials. Qin Jiming told Hansen how to use the gadget and Hansen took the solution and gadget to the holographic training hall. He had not logged in Gladiator for a while. Checking his friend list, Hansen found that both Queen and QHZ were offline, and Desperado whom he added long time ago he was online. Since adding him, Desperado had never sent him a message or invite. Hansen did not understand why Desperado would add him in the first place. He was very impressed by Desperado, who had very high fitness level. Hansen was matched with him randomly by the system several times and lost within a few movements every time. Sparring with such a master, Hansen could barely learn anything because he lost too fast. Closing the friend list, Hansen suddenly received an invite from Desperado when he was about to be matched randomly. Hansen hesitated and clicked yes. He did not care if Desperado simply wanted to kick his ass, because hardship was what made one improve. Hansen accepted the invite and entered Gladiator. Seeing Desperado was still empty-handed, Hansen chose not to use any weapon as well. Friend, which branch in Ares Martial Hall are you from? After the countdown ended, Desperado did not attack but sent Hansen a message. Hansen was dazed and answered, I am not in Ares Martial Hall. Desperado was surprised. There were plenty of students from Ares Martial Hall and Gladiator. Since Hansen was able to mimic 13 slashes and diversion, Desperado thought he might be someone from Ares Martial Hall, which turned out not to be the case. Are you interested in joining us? Desperado asked. He was interested in this person who could keep QHC interested in fighting him. I'm sorry, but I am still in military school, replied Hansen casually. Desperado was dazed. If he was in military school, he could only be a researcher or teacher, because of the military school students should be unevolved. Which school? asked Desperado. I cannot say, said Hansen, unwilling to leak any personal information. Desperado did not ask and gestured the Hansen to start. Hansen threw a punch, and Desperado copied his move. Hansen was surprised and then understood what Desperado was trying to do. 
Desperado was mimicking Hansen's techniques and limiting his own fitness level to around 30. Hansen felt amused. He was a copycat himself, while a master like Desperado would choose to copy him. He wondered what Desperado was up to. Maybe a master always has some quirks. Hansen did not care, since he had learned these techniques from others anyways. Hansen continued to attack, practicing what he had learned. The various techniques that Hansen had learned were mostly from QHC, who had strong abilities in all aspects. Many techniques of QHC seemed to be the advanced version of Panorama. Hansen had fought QHC frequently and had learned a lot from him. Of course, Desperado did not copy Hansen to learn anything. What he was trying to do was to push Hansen to use his strongest skills. I will crush all the lesser techniques you use and push you to use what you truly got. Therefore, I could determine how strong you actually are. Desperado was confident in doing that. Although he did not have a distinct personal characteristic like Queen did, he had an eclectic style and was famous for that in Ares Martial Hall. Very soon, Desperado started to feel confused. Hansen seemed to have unlimited techniques up his sleeve, many of which seemed similar to those taught in Ares Martial Hall. Desperado did not believe that Hansen was not from the same organization as he did. In addition, Desperado felt uncomfortable when fighting Hansen, which was familiar feeling to him, but he could not think of when he had felt it. Desperado dodged another punch and found himself at the corner of the stage, almost hitting the wall. Queen. Desperado suddenly remembered what that feeling was. A soldier on warship used the same techniques Queen did. Chapter 349. Phoenix-like creature. Desperado then realized he was right. It was what Queen made him feel. Although a soldier on warship was no match to Queen and did not bring him the same pressure, the feeling was the same. How could this person make me feel this way? It is impossible he had learned that elsewhere. Maybe this guy is connected to Queen somehow? Desperado thought to himself skeptically. When he thought about it, he felt it was impossible. Queen was an orphan raised by Huang Fu Xiongqing. Since a soldier on warship said he was not from Ares Martial Hall, how was it possible that he was connected to Queen? Desperado was trying to confirm this, so he defeated Hansen with one blow and sent Hansen another invite. Why did Desperado defeat Hansen? Because when trying to maintain his fitness level around 30, he was trapped in the corner by Hans Senator if he did not use his true strength, he would lose. Ready to fight again, Desperado again chose to keep his fitness around 30. He was paying attention to Hansen's every move and was able to determine Hansen was indeed using Queen's skills. Trying to fight Hansen with a fitness level around 30, Desperado was basically fighting Queen of a weaker version, which allowed Desperado to observe the kiting skills better. Desperado thought it might help him in the future when he sparred with Queen. With such thoughts, Desperado fought Hansen repeatedly. However, as long as he kept his fitness level the same as Hansen, he would always be pushed into a corner. There was simply no way he could win. All he could do was to rely on his fitness. Desperado was upset about this. He was a fast learner himself, but he was unable to learn the kiting skills no matter what. There was a simple explanation for that. As long as one knew the rules, one could play go. However, not everyone could become a master. Although Desperado was good at mimicking other people's skills, calculation and strategy could not be obtained simply by mimicking. One had to think for oneself. Hansen was a beginner himself and was not even close to Queen's level. However, he could beat Desperado who had never tapped into this field before easily. The two fought a dozen times, and Desperado won every single time. However, Desperado was not happy at all. He only won because he had better fitness. In terms of technique, he had lost completely. I should go. See you next time. Hansen left Gladiator at mealtime. He felt like he had gained a lot. In the beginning, Desperado was trying to copy him, but later, Desperado had to use many techniques he had not seen before to cope with kiting skills. Hansen could not learn everything on the spot, but it was still a great inspiration for him to practice panorama. If it was not because he wanted to use Gravity Trainer after lunch, Hansen would have fought Desperado some more. Although Hansen was still losing on Gladiator, he was committed to practicing on Gladiator. It did not matter whether he could win as long as he was making progress. After lunch, Hansen walked to a gravity trainer. Suddenly, he got a message on his comm link which turned out to be from Rainbow Man. Hansen quickly checked Rainbow Man's reply. Rainbow Man said he had organized a group to hunt the phoenix-like creature. 
If Hansen was interested, he could sign up as well. Joining the group would cost Hansen a fortune, and he had to have enough strength to get Rainbow Man's approval before joining. Rainbow Man had also told him a time and place to meet. Hansen thought it would not hurt to take a look. There was no one he feared in Steel Armor Shelter anyway. The time was set on the day after tomorrow. According to Rainbow Man, he posted the information several months ago, so he could not guarantee the creature would still be there. All he could promise was to find the burnt tree. Hansen wrote down the time and place and decided to take a look the day after tomorrow. He would not let go of any lead on a super creature. Entering the gravity trainer again, Hansen still set the parameters around 25. This time, he made it to the fifth testing item. I have passed five, and there are only five more to go, thought Hans Sr. If he could reach 25 using just overload, his fitness could pass 30 with heresy mantra added. With the flame lieutenant and devil sword, he would then be a threat to super creatures. Of course, there was that he could hit a super creature in its weak part. In addition, I will need a sacred blood sword, otherwise the devil sword would be useless. However, Hansen could not think of anyone who had a sacred blood sword. Son of Heaven used to have a sacred blood sword, which he took to Second God Sanctuary. Even if he did not, it was unlikely that Son of Heaven would sell the sword to him. Hansen pondered and did not think anyone else in Steel Armor Shelter who had a sacred blood sword. If I can't find a sacred blood sword, that will be problematic. Hansen suddenly thought of the Z Steel Blacksmith. He remembered seeing a weapon with 75% Z-Steel at the blacksmith's place. He wondered if that was real. The best Z-Steel product in the Alliance only had less than 20% Z-Steel. If that weapon really had such a high portion of Z-Steel, maybe it could even be compared to a sacred blood weapon. In that case, I wish it could be remodeled into a sword. Hansen dialed the blacksmith's number and asked about that weapon. He remembered the price was 100 million which was no longer an issue for Hansen as long as it was good. It is definitely stronger than a sacred blood weapon. But it could not be remodeled, the blacksmith replied Hansen definitively. Why not? Hansen asked, puzzled. It was a metal weapon, it could always be remade. After a long silence, the blacksmith said, this is not made with human technology and no one could remake it. Chapter 350, Evolvers and First God Sanctuary. Hansen continued to ask, but the blacksmith did not answer any of his questions and hung up. There was nothing Hansen could do. If the weapon could not be made into a sword, it did not make sense for him to purchase it. At the agreed time, Hansen went to meet Rainbow Man and gasped, It's you? Rainbow Man had the same reaction and stared his eyes wide. Rainbow Man turned out to be Su Xiaoqiao. Damn it. You're Rainbow Man? Hansen looked Su Xiaoqiao up and down wondering if he was disseminating fake news for money. Su Xiao and chuckled and said, I just wanted to make some money and didn't expect to meet you. So you were lying about the phoenix-like creature? Hansen asked in disappointment. Of course not. When have I ever lied? All right, maybe I have. But I can swear on my dick this time that I have seen that creature, Su Xiao said excitedly. Really? Hansen looked at Su Xiao incredulously. The realist. Su Xiaoqiao felt upset being doubted. Okay, how much is it? Take me with you, said Han Sr. How can I ever ask you for money? Just follow me there. But I have already collected money from other people, so we will need to take them as well, said Su Xiaoqiao. It's okay, I will pay you. Hansen did not want to take advantage of Su Xiaoqiao. Su Xiaoqiao grabbed Han Sen's hand and said with a grin, in fact, I am scared to bring those people there. If you could follow me, that would be best. I don't want money, but your protection. You're hiding something. Hansen regarded Su Xiaoqiao. Ahem, I did not lie, all right? I have seen that phoenix-like creature with my own eyes, and I know where the burnt tree is. However, the creature had flown away. Although I have told everyone that already, I am scared that some people might find trouble with me if they do not see the creature. Su Xiaoqiao cleared his throat and said, Where did the creature go? Hansen saw Su Xiaoqiao's look and knew it was unlikely for him to see the creature this time. It flew into Devil Desert, and I did not dare to chase after it. So I have no idea, Su Xiaoqiao said honestly. Hansen decided to have a look. Devil Desert was not too dangerous for him. Maybe there was still a chance. Su Xiaoqiao was overjoyed that Hansen agreed to come along. All Su Xiaoqiao was trying to do was to earn some money. With Hansen with him, he would not need to worry those who paid him would harm him. 
Su Xiaoqiao had met the rest of those people, and Han Sin was the last. Initially, Su Xiaoqiao planned to collect the fees and take them all to see the burnt tree, so he and Han Sin went to the agreed place. After everybody had arrived, Han Sin couldn't help frowning. Most of the people that Su Xiaoqiao had appointment with were not from Steel Armor Shelter. The few from Steel Armor Shelter all knew Han Sin and said hi. Other guys did not say hi to Han Sin and obviously did not know him. In addition, anyone could tell that the other guys were there together, and their leader was someone in golden armor. After checking out those people out, Su Xiaoqiao also felt lucky that he had run into Han Senator these people might very well be dangerous guys. Since everyone had arrived, Su Xiaoqiao took them into Devil Desert. Han Sin, I heard that your archery skills are excellent. Could you show us? When they were having a rest, the guys from Steel Armor Shelter asked Han Sin to perform archery skills. Han Sin did not say anything, but Su Xiaoqiao grinned and said, I'm not bragging for Senator in terms of archery. In First God Sanctuary, no one is Sin's match. That is a daring claim, said the guy in golden armor coldly. His followers were all showing contempt as well. Su Xiaoqiao tried to argue, but was stopped by Han Senator Hans and said quietly to the guy in golden armor, We are all just chatting. Don't take it too seriously. The guy in golden armor did not want to let go of it and said arrogantly, I only know two people in steel armor shelter. One is Dollar who beat Idomu with one strike, and the other is the former head of steel armor gang, Qin Xian. Everyone else in the shelter is a nobody. Hansen smiled indifferently and did not pay him mind. Although the guy in golden armor thought highly of himself, in Hansen's eyes, the guy was not even worth his anger. The guy looked like he had great fitness, but judging from his behaviors, he was not someone serious about practicing martial arts. Therefore, a strong physique meant nothing. Seeing that Hansen was not bothered, the guy in golden armor frowned and sneered, If you don't agree with me, Show me your best martial arts skills, and I can give you some instructions for free. I promise that you will thank me later. You're the one who's bragging. Instruct Hansen. Do you even know who he is? Su Xiaoqiao said madly, despite that Hansen did not want to talk to the guy. The guy heard Su Xiaoqiao's comment and laughed. And one of his followers, a hunk, laughed and said, We don't know who Hansen is, but Mr. Yu is the strongest person in First God Sanctuary. Quite a talker. Unfortunately, none of us is blind. Last year we had heard no Mr. Yu among the chosen, said Su Xiaoqiao with his lips curled. The hunk sneered, Mr. Yu is an evolver with all his geno points maxed out. Now do you still disagree with me? Those who were from Steel Armor Shelter looked to the guy in golden armor, shocked. They did not expect him to be an evolver with all his geno points maxed out. Normally speaking, one could choose to stay in First God Sanctuary for a while after becoming an evolver. When one teleported out of God's sanctuary and entered again, one would then be sent to second God's sanctuary. However, as long as one did not leave the shelter, one could stay in first God's sanctuary as an evolver. Not many people would do that, because nothing in first God's sanctuary was not meaningful to an evolver. In addition, if one chose to stay in first God's sanctuary longer than a certain period of time after evolving, one's body would be punished by the rules of God's sanctuary and suffer a great deal. Most evolvers would choose to go to second God's sanctuary directly.